Taylor's mom's giving me is not a gift, it's a love offering. My nigga, stop playing with me. Listen to me. What your mom gives me is amazing. And she already knows what I want. It is. You Yo. wouldn't call, would you call your mama's pie a gift? She never cut a slice for you. So yes, she relax. Has. No, she hasn't. She did no, at the radio station one day. But she cut it and then she pulled it up. And she said, come here, baby. No, she didn't. <laughs> she said, she said come me. here, Sean. Relax. I'm not going to show you the DMs. No, you're so But I don't have a... Um... <laughs> yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, we are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiot This. Uh, the Hezzy has checked out for the holidays, y'all. You know, but uh, being that we were going to be gone for the next couple of weeks, I'm like, man, let's give him at least, you know, one more episode. Uh, Hezzy said, fuck it. <laughs> he, 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 did, he, did, he did not feel that way uh, But I am here, you know, to do a, a number of things Namely, sell products, okay? <laughs> As you can see, I have a lot of things from Black Privilege Publishing right here We have Invisible Generals by Doug Melville State of Emergency by Tamika Mallory And Shallow Waters by Anita Kopax Plus the classics that started it all My book, Black Privilege Publishing, as well as Shook One Available wherever you buy books Right now. But Nyla Simone is here. What's up, Nyla? Hey, Shar. Uh, Alex is here. Taylor is here. Here's Chris is here. about these over here, too. Oh, this is just a little something. You know what oh. I mean? This is just, uh, you know, me and Kevin Hart got a company called SBH Productions. Uh, and we put out audi audible originals, audio scripted content. So you have Finding Tamika by the great Erica Alexander in Color Farm Media. You have uh, Summer of 85 narrated, Kev narrated by Kevin Hart from the great Chris Moreau. Uh, you have Unleashed for Love, which was created by Alicia Renee and Sarita Wesley. And we have the new one. Uh, broke down profits from the New York Times Author of the Year, S.A. Cosby, which stars uh, Brian Tyree Henry, Dasha Polanco, and a man named Jonathan Majors, who was found uh, not guilty. That's what we need to lead with. Pull up the Jonathan Major story. I Taylor. thought he was found guilty. You see, that's y'all problem. It's like partially guilty. No, he right? was. Yeah, yeah, that's, but, but see, that's the problem I have with this whole conversation. People lead with headlines instead of actually looking at the details of the situation. Now, this, cl click, click on what, 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 what actually happened in court this past week. Jury, click on the CNN one. Jury finds Jonathan Majors guilty of assault and harassment. Now, when you hear that, what do you think? Well, they said over her fingernail. Yeah. But what do you, when you hear it, what do you, that's, that's over her fingernail. He was accused of twisting her arm, punching her in the back of the head. Yeah, but he was only guilty of hurting her finger. That's my point. So the larger charge of twisting her arm, punching her in the back of the head, he was found, not, was... He was found not guilty of. Essentially, what he got, a, he got two misdemeanors. He got, he, he played, he, he got found guilty of two misdemeanors. Pull up, uh, the article back up, Taylor. Oh, where is it at? Let me be professional here and read, and read the breakdown, even though Taylor just moved away from the news report to go to her cliff notes. Do we trust Taylor's cliff notes or do we trust... Now, mind you, Taylor's notes are a neighborhood talk article. No, they're not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She moved away from hey, go CNN, to, CNN. Go to, to go CNN. to a neighborhood talk article. I, I just, just want y'all to know that. No, I put this, first of all, I put the neighborhood talk thing so y'all could see what Megan, whatever her name sure, is. Sure, but why do we do this as a people? Why do we go away from trusted news sources like CNN? But who said that? That goes to see, and salute the neighborhood talk, respect neighborhood talk, but just think about that mentality. You were on CNN. Huh? I'm just saying this stuff right here wasn't from it. But that's all previous stuff. It says a verdict is expected. Yeah, see, here we go. A New York jury on, this is CNN. A New York jury on Monday found actor Jonathan Majors guilty of assault. Damn, Alex, you just gonna fart like that? Come on. <laughs> oh, bro, God we damn. Just, son, we, <laughs> we, we, we just started. That's what I'm saying. Not even five like, minutes in. We trying to all talk about some right. serious stuff. You just gonna fart? <laughs> you gonna shoot already. A all New York right. jury on Monday found actor Jonathan Majors guilty of assault and harassment of his former girlfriend during a domestic dispute. Majors, a rising star who has appeared in Disney's Marvel franchises and Creed 3, was convicted on Monday of one count of reckless assault in the third degree and a non-criminal charge of harassment as a violation. Both of them were misdemeanors. He was acquitted on another assault charge and one count of aggravated harassment. So essentially, he got charged with the video you see when you see her, when you see him, I guess, taking his phone and then taking her and then putting her back in the car and then taking off running, yeah. that's the misdemeanor assault charge. 
Him protecting himself. Him protecting himself. Why isn't there more conversation around the two larger charges being him being found not guilty on? Because this is America, and you expect that from an interracial relationship. The damn, 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 damn. Like, what type damn. of question was that? Damn. So yeah. you think this is just straight racial? Yeah. Hmm. Of course. And not to mention, it was right after Creed just dropped. He just got a major contract with Marvel. I feel like we see this time and time again with any of our large black stars. We do have to stop acting like that's such a big deal, though. You know, even when I heard Jonathan on the phone and Jonathan was talking and he was like, he's doing great things for the culture. We can insert the call. He's doing great things for the culture and great things in the world. It's like, bro, it was Creed 3 in that, man. Oh, oh, oh. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's like, that's not changing the world, guys. Okay. We're into it. I meant more so maybe not doing things for the culture. That's him. I don't. I, the, I just meant he's doing he's doing good as a black when, man. When y'all say things like that, I'm gonna tell you why it don't make sense to me because <laughs> there's not these powers that be that care that he got a contract with Marvel. There's not these powers that be that care he did. Creed 3. Now, is there always a, a, a racial component to it? Absolutely. We've been seeing that since the beginning of time. But my point with saying all that is there's poor black people who don't have, poor black men who don't have any of the things that Jonathan Majors have had, who've had situations with white women, who've, who've experienced worse fates. Okay? You know, I mean, like, like, way, way, way worse fates. So I don't like when people just chalk it up to uh, entertainment. I think, it's, I think it's race and I think it's status. I think it's both. It could be status when you're looking at uh, the D.A. Alvin Bragg. I've heard people say that. People say, you know, D.A. Alvin Bragg likes these kind of kind of cases. You know, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't I don't know what, what to be true and what's not to be true. Right. But all I know is nobody. I was watching CNN the other day, man, and I saw them having a discussion about the Jonathan Majors case. And nobody once said these are two misdemeanors. Nobody one now, now one time did somebody say he was charged with two misdemeanors. Now one time did they say the 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 the, the larger allegations of what the prosecution was was saying, which was the twisting of the arm and punching in her head. Nobody said he was found not guilty on those. Everybody just runs with the headline assault and harassment. There's no context to it, no nuance to it whatsoever, and he's dropped from Marvel now. I mean, that Marvel headline came out instantly. They were ready. Yeah, they were instantly. ready. Instantly. They were ready. They but, wanted but, to. But, but my point is, do you think that if there was an actual conversation about the nuance of what happened, the, the nuance of what he actually was found guilty of, you don't think Marvel would have been like, you know what, I think we can, we can, we can stand by that. I feel like Marvel Put him in some anger to... management, you know what I mean? Yeah, Marvel but... Marvel was trying to get him out of there anyway. Why? Now, see, now, nobody's having that conversation either. No. But that's... I feel like Marvel was trying to get him out of there because they were so quick. I because mean, Phase two... 5 yes, sucks. exactly. If Ant-Man performed better <laughs> and the yes. show did a little bit better, yes. they would have been like, eh, there's yes. a little nuance here. I hate when these yeah. companies try to take these that's moral funny. stands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Phase 5 sucks. Yeah. Yeah. The King shit ain't working. Yeah. Marvel has already had conversations and put things out there and said, hey, man, they were already thinking about moving away from that way before oh, this shit that. happened yeah, because Ant-Man didn't perform well and because the whole Kang thing was getting too convoluted with the multiverse and all of this and that. They were already thinking about moving away from it, but now they want to act like they're taking some type of moral stand. They ain't take that kind of stand for Hawkeye. Ooh. Jeremy, uh, what's his name? Jeremy Renner was his name? Renner, yeah. Now, mind you, Jeremy Renner was just allegations that his wife made. What was the allegations? That, uh, that he put a gun in his mouth and threatened to kill himself or something like that uh, and threatened to kill her and the baby. Like Those are just allegations, right? I just don't understand when people pick and choose you know, when they want to stand next to people because most people get those kind of allegations that Jeremy Renner did in a divorce court a company like Marvel and Disney is moving away. Yeah, she accused them of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse. Come on, man. Come on, man. You know what I mean? I well, mean... But in this case, he was still found guilty. Even though he's found guilty of the lesser charges, mm -hmm. he still put his hands on a woman and people would be like, ah, oh, there's no room for that. Put his hands on a woman in the context of snatching his phone away and putting her back in the car and then taking off running. Yeah, I mean, it's still... Away from her. <laughs> like, they literally said, they literally said in the charges, it, it proves he didn't have the intent to yeah. harm her. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then why is there a charge in general? But I mean, Because I you're not supposed to put your hands on people. 
Like somebody steals your women sucking their teeth. By the way, I just want to know. know. Just, All I, the men I know, in the room that is crazy, did not right? suck our teeth. That's that crazy. was the women in the room. Taylor and Nyla sucking their teeth. That was not us. I just want you to know that. Yeah. Because <laughs> technically, somebody takes your property. You're supposed to go to the cops. Hey, this person took my property. I want it back. Nobody does that. Somebody ah. isn't. You know what's so crazy? I was me and my me and my cousin was working out yesterday. Salute the perm, and he asked me that too. He was like, "Yo, so what do you do in a situation if you're Jonathan Majors? Like, what do you do in that Poster situation?" Run, like I'm like, "Man, let her keep the phone." <laughs> yes. That's what I, you should have it's, it's all You already want to break up with her anyway. It's over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, let her keep the phone unless he's trying to protect somebody, which he may have been doing in that case right there. If if if, if the sto- if the rumors are true and the rumors were it was the person we currently see him with all the time, making good, texting him, mm-hmm. he didn't want to leave the phone with her because, you know, you never know. She might take that and run with that information. Mm-hmm. And, and they might not have been ready to be revealed to the world just yet. But I mean... This is such a silly video. It is not a silly video. <laughs> like, Taylor said that, that that video with him running is not silly. That is exactly what I'm you saying should do. I'm saying it's silly for her. Like, why is she chasing after that, him? That, that is exactly what you should yeah. do if you're in that situation. Why is she yeah. Take yeah. off running. Like that. If a white woman hits you and you're a black man, run. <laughs> I mean, run and scream for help. If any woman hits you, Run. Yeah, run. Run. You can't, you know, what, what, what can you do? There's, not, there's nothing you're going to be able to do in that situation. Because if, if she hits you and let's just say you grab her hands, like you just grab her just to hold her to keep her from hitting you. Now I'm going to get a misdemeanor assault charge? Yep. Well, if she calls the police. She's definitely calling the police. Well, yeah, her, yeah. I'm just saying though, like. I don't know, man. I'm just saying all that to say Broke Down Prophets is on Audible right now. <laughs> Written by S.A. Cosby. I see the point about why is narrative, okay. why is media not having the conversation about how he had such heavy charges? Because mm-hmm. then they would have to take accountability for all the things that they've been putting out. Well, it's not me. See, it's, here's the thing: it's never media. Well, it is sometimes, but it's 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 social media. It's the conversation around. I think it's media. Both of, that was the CNN headline. The CNN headline is the one. You're right. And I mean, because that's a credible source. Technically, he did get charged. You know, uh, with, with assault and harassment, but there's levels to it. It was it was two misdemeanors. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. One is a non. It's, it's a non-criminal charge. Yeah. So I don't, I don't even understand that. But language. words like non-criminal charge don't get them the clicks and the likes that they need. So why would they use? But that is whack, man. You playing with people's reputations. You playing with people's livelihoods. You know what I mean? Like that's like that's just whack. Like why can't we have nuanced conversation? Like why do we always gotta just run with the most salacious headline? just for clicks and shits and giggles because we know motherfuckers don't read. We know motherfuckers don't ever get to the nuance of the situation ever, never. It's just whatever the headline is and now you stuck with that. Marvel saw that headline, they're like, man, drop the press release. I know. Drop it, put it out. Even though Marvel, y'all know good and damn well, y'all thought the whole Kang Dynasty was whack anyway, and y'all was looking for a reason to prune that shit from y'all timeline. <laughs> okay, let's not act like let's not act like y'all took some moral high ground because there's a lot of you know sketchy things that have happened with people in the Marvel universe that you know y'all ain't in no rush to 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 to, to drop people over. Yeah. And ain't just Hawkeye. And some other, it's another superhero. I'm gonna re- keep that one quiet though. Ooh. It's out there. You, you, you um, can Google it. The crazy part about this is that he came home and saw her passed out, and he and called, called the cops. <laughs> so had he not called the cops, no one would have known about this. You called nine one one. You reported, and you end up in jail. Yeah, it's crazy. Come on, man. Um, come on, man. I mean, I don't. I don't know what's what. I don't know what's true and what's not true. I'm just saying that this is. There's a lot of nuance in this situation. And there's usually a lot of nuance in all these situations, but we never explore it because we just live in a world where people have to pick a side. Mm -hmm. It's either like, I gotta be right, I gotta be left, I gotta be, you know, uh, over here, I gotta be over there. Like nobody can ever discuss everything that's in the middle, the middle of it. And I think that's why these companies like Marvel, you know, jump to do stuff like this because automatically he's painted as a woman beater. Now, you hear the phone call, right? I saw them taking that into consideration as well. Does the phone call, does, does, does that mean he's violent or arrogant? I hear a lot of arrogance. People I hear a lot of ego. People don't like arrogance, though. Oh. Like, it doesn't help. No, at all. Like, I don't want to hear you telling a white woman that she need to be more like a Red Scott King 
and and and, and Michelle Obama, and I and, and I don't want to hear you tell me that you know what you're doing is affecting culture and the world. <laughs> like you did Creed three and Ant Man. <laughs> you know, what let him feel great. I think so. No. Wait, can I tell you something? No. I think I'm saying though. that though because like black women looked at him like, oh, like just another black man to look that's handsome and everything else. Like I think that's what he's taking in. As, I, han- as handsome as I am, do I act like that? Yes. What? Anyway, as handsome as I am, please. do you hear me out here saying that I'm changing the world? Yes, 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 exactly. Yes. Like, what are you talking about? I'm going to disregard the first part and just answer your question. When do I yes. say stuff like and this? And then secondly, I think in regards to um, him changing the world, I think just being a successful black man is a statement in itself. Yeah, just like being a well-versed, educated black woman is a statement in itself. So to be fair, like, he can do that. There are There are way less successful black men than there are unsuccessful. So he could, he could. It depends what you call walk. success. I think that we're looking at it from an entertainment perspective. I'm just saying, in general, the nigga got a, a, a paying job that does well. So do black doctors. Okay, and I'm not saying so they do don't, black lawyers, so do black architects, black engineers. I'm just saying that. He's a celebrity. America worships celebrity. We we put celebrity on a pedestal. We act like celebrities do such amazing things. I tell y'all all the time this shit is just, it's just radio, it's just TV. It's just books. Like our job, I worked at Taco Bell and sold crack. You know what I'm saying? I worked at a factory. I worked at a flower garden. Like those are the people that are actually making the world go around. Not the niggas that work at Taco Bell and sell crack are making the world go around. (laughs) That's what we. Way more important than entertainers. (laughs) Okay. What are you talking about? Yeah, they're just killing our community. Fast food workers. They're killing our community hey, hey, listen, with the food and the crack. They don't, they, they don't own the fast food companies. They just work there to make a living. But do you eat fast food? Not anymore. But My do you eat fast food? Not to. Well, your doctor don't tell you. But when you hey, did. You want to know why he told me not to eat that? Because it's fucking killing me. Sure, but when you worked there, when you did eat it, when you walked into those restaurants, you were happy when somebody no, they was, gave me got your attitude. food on they time. Got my fucking order wrong. I had to come back in. They forgot to give me the sauce. It was a headache. Because they knew you shouldn't have been eating that you... shit. Never mind. What? Because yeah, fast, yeah, 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 wait. Because fast, <laughs> first of all, fast food workers are essential. Do not hate on those fast food workers. Regardless of what you may think of the fast food, y'all wake up in the morning and y'all go to these establishments. And if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't get what the fuck you need. I make oatmeal. Well, that is true, but there's a lot of people that go to these fast food establishments. That's why they make multi billions of dollars. I'm not saying they're not essential workers. And All crack. I'm saying is, God. you're crazy. It's motherfuckers that can't get through their day right now without a hit. So that's not <laughs> good. Think <laughs> for yourself. It keeps, keeps the world going yourself. around, bro. Y'all are crazy. If you didn't have crack, you know how much things you wouldn't have. So wait, 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 wait. Some of the greatest, <laughs> some of the greatest content of all time was centered around crack. Mm. Yeah, Every true. great mm. drug movie you love, that's, this you know, music you love, and what, what the, do I the, always the, call the, the fly about? females in the hood yeah. who had all the fly gear and, and stuff. I the drug say, dealers paying I'm for it. I'm tired of seeing that shit. I've seen five fucking shows. I feel like this year alone, I'm like, okay, I get it. You know why you watch them? I all? don't want to see it no but you more. Know, name them. But name them. What you watch? BMF. Raising Canaan, Power. Snowfall. Snowfall. That's right. What's the Harlem one? That uh, I, uh, uh, the one with uh, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. Uh, 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 Godfather Har- Harlem. Godfather yeah. Harlem. Yeah. What else? Um, that's five, isn't it? Five. But Guess that's what? what you were choosing to watch. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> I did. You enjoyed them. You know why? Not, you not you know why up. you got those shows? Crack. <laughs> crack. 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 That crack. 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 The world go around. That actually didn't help our community at all. It helped some. You're and right. then they ended up in jail and then their families got dismantled listen, and now they're coming out. Listen, and now we're glorifying it. It's not through. glorifying, you're just telling the story. <laughs> nobody it's ever said nobody glorified. ever said Italians was glorifying the mob. Oh my god. Nobody ever said that. They definitely were. They were. They were just telling the story. Everybody knows film and music glorifies the things that you're talking about. I don't know if it's I don't know if glorification is the yeah, word. I, don't think. I think sometimes they usually end up dead or in jail, so it's not really That's glorifying. Right. The, only t- the only time where cautionary it's not glor- tales. The yeah. only time it's not really cautionary because they're not telling you to not do this. It's actually encouraging niggas like, damn, he could do that. They're not watching Yo, the whole movie now. To- you turn in the movie before it ends. Then. I mean, the only the only show that you watching was like, damn, this didn't end well with Snowfall. Like That's nobody not true. wanted to be. Well, BMF is based off a true story. 
Salute yes. to Big Meech. Big Meech has been in jail We're not for the longest. We're not seeing that in the show. Every, you right about now, to? Right He's now, gonna he, get to it. Yeah. Eventually. By the way, there's no there's no story you read that you know these people didn't end up in jail or dead. Like Godfather Harlem is based off real people. Who's it based off? Nikki Bum- Barnes, right? Yeah. Like, just, no, no, no. You, no, it's off uh, Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy, Bumpy. Bumpy Johnson. Yeah. Google is your friend. When you watch these shows, you can Google to see how this stuff you is going. You think niggas in. is Google? You just said niggas don't read. Now you want us? Oh, niggas Google. And see how niggas don't read, but niggas will Google. Mm. Niggas, will not, <laughs> niggas, won't, niggas won't pick up any of these, but these niggas will Google, okay? A nigga will Google, and y'all will watch a YouTube video. <laughs> there's plenty, there's plenty <laughs> of YouTube videos about Bumpy Johnson and all these drug dealers and how their life ends. All I'm simply saying is, don't front on crack. Yes, it ruined communities, but it also gave you some great content, and you just named five shows that you love because of crack. Yes, they're great shows, but it was just like, damn, I need to, I need to see something else. Maybe an Ant Man, you know. Well, maybe a plenty of movies though you could watch. <laughs> like you're... yeah, you are choosing that. So you're saying Taco Bell workers and crack? No, 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 no. What, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, everybody plays a part, and I think sometimes because we worship celebrity the way we do in America, and we're so obsessed with celebrity, we put celebrities on a pedestal that they may or may not deserve to be on. You know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of actors and actresses in Hollywood who are doing very well, and I've never seen any of their movies. You understand what I'm saying? But you're going to interact with one of these essential workers every day of your life. You know what I mean? Like, uh, literally. Uh, so I can't I can't front on the fast food workers like that. Like, I, if you ask me, I think they're more important than a lot of these actors and actors. I mean, I don't know. To me, regardless if you're a fast food worker or you're an entertainer, it's just about good character. So if you're doing a bad you job go. at your I'm service, you. I'm not fucking giving you a great tip. And it, also, if you're an asshole entertainer, I'm not supporting your show. But you've interacted with more fast food workers than you ever have entertainers, even in your line of work. Just make sure you're a good person and do good shit, and then you'll get the support. I agree with you. I'm just, uh, I, I don't even know how we got on this conversation, but. Me either. I thought we was talking about crack. Fucking, but. No. <laughs> the thing no. I, the moral of the story is with the Jonathan Major situation, I just wish people, you know, dealt with more nuance. And I wish people had, you know, more of the, 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 the detailed conversation about what he actually was charged with. And, you know, just going back to what I was saying earlier, and even though this was presented in a court of law, so it makes sense, people take these phone calls and, you know, these videos, and they piece all of these things together to create their own narrative. So most of the time, you you guilty before proven innocent in the court of law. Like, I've literally, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, and it was like, man, Jonathan Major should have did an interview. No, he shouldn't have. Jonathan Major should have testified in court, which he didn't do. Mm. But the person was like, no, he should have sat down and did a one-on-one interview with somebody. For what? For the court of public opinion? This might be one of those cases where the court of public opinion might work in his benefit. Because that video of him running away, everybody's looking at that like, yo, he wasn't doing anything. Like, he's running away to save himself. So this might be a case where he's all right. Alex is absolutely right. And that goes back to my point. Marvel could have stuck around if they wanted to. Oh, yeah. Marvel didn't want to. Marvel wanted to prune Kang from their fucking timeline. Because they knew that that Kang Dynasty shit was not working. The Ant-Man shit didn't turn out too well. They probably was looking at what happened with Flash and Ezra Miller. And Ezra had way wilder charges than Jonathan. Several of them. Mm. And DC still stuck by Ezra and put that movie out. And it didn't do well. And they're probably looking at what just happened with the Marvels, you know, and and the lowest grossing movie of all time in Marvel history. And so they was like, you know what? Let's move away from this now. Let's cut our losses and let's try to reset this. Do you feel like, because I feel like Jonathan Majors is a really good actor. And I feel like the Creed 2 or 3 would have helped, like helped push for his next movie. No, I think he had way better shit coming out than that. I think that magazine Dreams movie that Disney bought, I, they they was talking about him winning an Oscar for that shit. I haven't seen it, but everybody who saw it at film festivals and stuff says it's fantastic. He plays like a bodybuilder who has like anger management issues, you know. And I think I think because of, of steroid use. So it, it, I mean, it just makes you wonder how much how much art is imitating life. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And then that's the other thing, man. When it comes to these situations, it's like we 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 crucify these people, but nobody ever talks about 
what the solution is. The solution can't just be don't date white women. You know what I'm saying? Like, that can't just be the solution. The solution is... <laughs> No, no, I'm not saying I can't. <laughs> I, that is a piece of advice. I, my brother, you know, I, I'm concerned. But I feel it's just triggering because of my experience in America. Hell, three white men catcalled at me the other day, and I was terrified. Like, I, I ain't never been scared of a nigga trying to talk to me. But That wasn't three, a nigga. See? Three. Stop blaming us for shit that the white man do. What? Jesus. You what? said three white men tried to holler at you. She said she's never been scared. Oh, you, oh, you separated. I said I was oh, okay. terrified when they tried to talk. It I'm sorry, because no, because earlier, you know I mean? no, 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 no. Don't listen to I'm sorry. No, 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 you know, no, you know why? Because earlier I watched you call a non-Negro a nigga. No, no, no. I had said niggas, but I was referring to people. I wasn't. Referring That's what I'm to saying. Black. So I thought you was calling those three white men niggas again. Just no, now. no, no, okay. no. no. But said, okay. But long story short, I was just saying I was terrified. I nor like not that I had a crazy experience with white men, but just because of the climate in the country, I was scared. Sure. So that's why I feel like that for black men as well. Like I'd be concerned. Sure. You know, I'm all for black love. You know what I mean? I ride with Dr. Umar on that point all day, every day. Okay? Salute to Dr. Umar. I don't have a problem with interracial relationships, but I like seeing black people with black people. Y'all know where I stand. All I'm simply saying is that can't be the only lesson that is learned from this situation, don't date white women. But I mean, if you're just trying to say, like, we need to have more nuanced conversations, we could pull that from uh, and people any need, fucking and headline people need to, that's No, outrageous. people need to deal with their anger issues. Uh -huh. One thing Jonathan said in that call that gets lost is he said, look, I have a temper. Or something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, I got a temper. We can play the call. He was like, you, you know, aside from my temper, I'm a great man. I do great things for my culture and my community and the world. You know, even though he just did Ant-Man and Creed. Okay, but still. I forgot about the other shows. Maybe there's something show. else Lovecraft doing. Country. Yeah. Either no, way, Love none of that, that country shit was, was fire. fire. It was fire. It was but it ain't changing the world, guys. They, got, they should bring that Come back. on, stop. But if he's performing <laughs> at the top tier of his industry, then that means he's doing Why are great things. Representation matters. Representation yeah. does matter, but there's no actor in the world who's ever done a performance that's so great that's changed the world. Chad, uh, Chad Wickbowman. God bless Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace. Black Panther didn't change the world. Black Panther well, definitely. Yo, come on. I don't on. think y'all y'all generation ain't seen when enough. You say change the world of what? Like just our mindsets and stuff. <laughs> I have a question. A <laughs> mindset about Chris, what? Chris, can you get him some examples of people who changed the actual world? <laughs> I want to know. Like what? Malcolm X. I, no, no, no. I'm talking about you. Talking about like actors. That's what I'm saying. We're arguing about how Albert Einstein changed the world. We no, can say that, right? I'm thinking you're saying. But I think I think Martin Luther King Jr. changed the world. No, you're right. I'm think I'm talking. I thought you were talking about like I, movies wise. Oh, that's what I was talking so about. You're talking about, about entertainment. entertainment. Yeah. But that's my point. <laughs> what what entertainer has changed the world through a role? The world? Yes. Does representation matter? Ho, yes. Ho, 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 ho. I got one. Okay. Maybe not an actor, but an artist. Mm. Michael Jackson. Entertainer changed the world. Did Michael and changed unified. the world. What? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, how? The world. Like, how? Like, I'm, he I got he, he combined uh, sound. He had rock. The Thriller Project, we were just talking about. He had That's actual still rock art. He didn't. I'm talking about changing society, he shifting, unifi shifting he unified society. People through music, even in his music. He video, turned into in a the, white man. In the, <laughs> because he had a fucking disease. You're right. You're right. But you're in right. the Thriller music video, he literally has dancers, theater people, Crips, go uh, gorillas. Like, By the way, I love Michael Jackson to death. But if Michael Jackson would have came out with, uh, it don't matter if you're black and white in this era, y'all would have crucified him. Y'all would have called him an Uncle Tom. Y'all would have called him a coon. Y'all would have called him All Lives Matter, I mean, Michael I Jackson. Have called him because I don't got a problem with white people. I just, I think... Because I, I, it does matter if you're black or white. It, it does matter, but... Oh, God. You're missing the point of the record. Okay. All right, no. Okay. Taylor just put up... This is a good one. Often referred to as the king of pop, his achievements helped to complete the desegregation of popular music in the United States and introduced an era of multiculturalism yes. and integration that future yes. generations of artists followed. What, what do you think, Chris? What hand, do you think, Chris? Chris? No, he literally Chris. got black music. Yo, hush when a TV. Jewish man is about to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you're part of the problem. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. He's <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> white. Speak, Mr. Jew. <laughs> <laughs> speak, Chris. Speak, Chris. Tell him, Chris. It's okay. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, he helped desegregate MTV, which I guess is not yeah. an insignificant thing. But I, I think you can make the case that rap changed the world. Rock and roll changed the That's world of so genres. Later, yeah, don't you gotta you gotta kind of give Michael that first because Michael was wasn't Michael the first black person that was played on MTV? And that's in the uh, it was either him or the Rock's box Michael. video. I think it was Run DMC maybe. Yeah. But he was he was Michael. Michael Jackson. It was Michael. And then it's Run DMC. Because Michael Thr Thriller was like eighty two. Run DMC I was until like eighty six. Yeah. It's yeah. Mike. I, it's for Mike. fact, I just watched a documentary on it. Chris, it's you're Mike. saying you want to say what I'm saying. What? You don't feel like entertainment is that important. No, I think entertainment is really important. Okay. I just don't know if I would use. I think the NBA has changed the world. If you're talking about race relations, right? I think like race relations. I think we still got some work to Ooh, do. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Muhammad to a Ali. That's a good one. To a degree. Yeah. Muhammad Ali definitely. Well, I mean, if you're saying like Michael Jackson change the world. My point is, it sounds like what you're saying is like he changed how people perceive African-American performers, right? Did they though? Yes. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean... What is, yes, like, he had fucking... He had fans of all colors passing out to go see him. Sure. But what legislation was changed because of no that? No legislation, but it it, it made... White, us, white, it, did, it, made it, it did not dismantle white supremacy. I think it made us and our art more accepting. They loved... They love But that's one the of thing, us. though. They love our art, but don't love us. Mm. Hey, I think we got to start somewhere. It's been... That was the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. the 80s, too. He was like an outlier, though. You asked me for an example. I would, I I would argue one. Public Enemy more than Michael Jackson, in a way. Public Enemy? I don't think they're global enough. They were really global. My, Mike is known every... I don't think They made... Enemy. I mean, their impact on white people thinking about politics was really significant. See, his, his, oh, 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 I his, got his, one, I got one. Hold on, read this right now. It says, Michael Jackson broke racial barriers and became a global icon, transcending cultural boundaries. The Moonwalk, a dance movie popularized, became a global sensation and solidified his status as a pop culture phenomenon. All of that is true for Michael Jackson to the point where somebody like, remember, you got entertainers throughout the years, whether it was Donald Glover or O.J. Simpson, they always felt like you could get to a place where right. you're so famous, you're not black anymore. What? They always they always said that. That's why OJ said, I'm not black, I'm OJ. So for Michael, yeah, Michael might have got looked at through the lens of that's Michael Jackson. He ain't black, he ain't white, that's Michael. But what about the rest of us? That's Changing what your world don't change the world. Oh, that's what I mean by outlier. I, I would say NWA impacted society. NWA. Hey, mm. no, Uncle Luke. No, no. Her Bob brother. Marley. Bob Marley. Hmm. His his whole thing was politics. Pull up Bob Marley. He's right. a great example. Yeah, Bob Marley's a great Bob example. Bob Marley's a great example. Harry Belafonte. For that era, yeah. But you know why, though? Because Harry Belafonte and was an used... But he was I using say, yeah. his celebrity to fuel social, social justice movements. Which Harry Belafonte was funding Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Exactly. and what he was doing. Yeah. Fucking Dale... Me say day, me say day, me say day. Oh, that was just a great song that we loved. That don't change the world. There's a lot of great music that we love, but it. it I mean, something. Music can change the world. Don't get me wrong. There are some songs I think have changed the world. Like "We Are the World" was a very impactful record. You know what I mean? To me, um, what's another song I think? When you sing. I don't know. I, listen, man. I, I, I mean, but there's a lot of people who are doing things but aren't like doing social justice. But, but read, but read, read that about Bob Marley. What's the first? What does the first thing say? I can't read it, so I got my glasses. On. Jesus Christ! Sorry, you I'm are so really you. You 27. I'm old and at heart. You got a you 27 and got a 70 year old <laughs> diet. Your doctor said you got to start. Your doctor said you can only eat fucking soft foods. Shut up. And you can't see. <laughs> I can't. What's the point of being 27? First of all, it says, just it says, read the goddamn it says, paragraph. It says, apart from his activism. That's the first thing. Apart from his activism, Marley was also an unofficial ambassador for Jamaica. As the island's most famous and impactful export, Marley introduced to the world not only Jamaican music, but also Rastafarianism, rooted in ideas of personal and spiritual freedom, peace, love, and cultural unity. That's not entertainment. Now... But he got, he he got famous because of his entertainment, and he yeah. would he would put those things in his music. Yes. But him, the person, and the other things he was doing is what changed the world. He was just using music as like, I guess the vehicle, the vehicle to, to it. Reach. That's true. Reach. I guess people wouldn't people wouldn't uh, 
people wouldn't love him if it wasn't for, for, for the music. I wouldn't know about the political climate in Jamaica if it wasn't for Bob Marley. So that's what I would say to a person like Jonathan Majors. I would say, if you're using your celebrity to do this kind of stuff, the way Harry Belafonte did, the way even an Aretha Franklin did, then you're helping to change the world. I mean, he was getting there. He was dressing like a civil rights activist. He definitely was dressing like a civil no, rights activist. No, that's a part of being an actor, though. You got to... No, 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 no. <laughs> he was priming us, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe this time... I've never seen a picture of Jonathan Majors that I didn't think should have been in black and white. <laughs> What about that Every picture? single picture I've ever seen of him look like it should be in black and white. Oh, Ebony Mag with the flowers. People were people really hated it, but I liked it. Yeah. That should have been black and white? No. But anytime the, anytime you know he puts on about? a suit and shoes, he should have been in black and white. Oh. But hey man. I don't know what's gonna happen with Jonathan Majors. You know, I just know that we live in a very, very, very unforgiving world. And, you know, we never have the other conversations we should be having. We should be talking about the trauma that the woman went through, the trauma that Jonathan Majors is going through. Like, we should be talking, we should be having those conversations. How do we prevent things like this from happening in the future? Once again, it can't just be, hey, black men, don't date white women. You know, even though I'm fine with if y'all choose not to. I'm just simply saying that that can't be the, 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 the resolution from this. Yeah. Because what happens to the next person Same that's shit. in this situation? You know what I mean? Like, there's got to be some type of... Something has to come from this. Well, how are I, I don't you know expecting if... <laughs> conversations to be had if we are all kind of brainwashed daily? Explain. Like, where are the places for people to have these conversations? Not social media. I'm, that's my point. Like we don't, we're not even having nuanced conversations anymore. Everything is just black or white. It either is or it ain't. And I'm like, that's not the way the world works, y'all. Like, you got to have nuanced conversations about things, man. There's a lot more details that go into things. Like, even when I was watching CNN the other day, uh, you know, I think I was watching, I forgot who I was watching, but I, the, the, the person was like, you know, and Jonathan has been accused of things before. And then right after she said that, she mentioned Diddy. And I'm like, whoa! That's like, crazy. like That's crazy. you can't just say that. Yeah. Why she like, you got together? You got to tell me what else he was accused of, yeah. right? Because the things I've heard him being accused of is just being an asshole, mm. <laughs> being, 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 having tantrums on set and being angry and mean and stuff like that. But you can't say he's been accused of things before, and then reference Diddy with everything that Diddy's going through right now, right? Like I need, like you got to be specific about these things, and I, I just think, man, that's that's very dangerous. I'm, I'm watching CNN, and to to your point, I think you said it earlier. Everybody ain't going to do no research. They're not going to dig no deeper than what they just saw on CNN, or uh, what they what they see in the headline. We do an ad. Uh, prize picks. Salute to Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. And now I can play during basketball season too. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Prize Picks is bringing your gifts early this year with the 12 days of Pixmas starting December 14th. There will be a new promotion every day for new and existing customers. The daily promotions will range from payout boosts to discounted projections. Phoenix Suns' Kevin Durant only needs one point on Christmas Day to make you a winner when placing an NBA entry. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you could turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. All right? Go to prizefix.com slash idiots and use code idiots for a first deposit. Match up to $100. That's prizefix.com slash idiots and use code idiots for a first deposit. Match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Also, this episode of The Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Factor. What's happening, Factor? Uh, salute to everybody out there, man, that's bustling during this holiday season. You might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel you on jam-packed days. I like that word, bustling. That means busting your ass and hustling, okay? That's how... That's how... <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I'm just saying, man, if you got that bussy... That bussy boy, <laughs> that's that bussy, bussy that, that bu bustle, uh, bussy's bustle, okay? 
Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Skip the meal planning, grocery shopping, chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, and get Factor's fresh, never frozen meals delivered to your door. They're ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is eat and enjoy. Choose from 35 plus chef crafted meals every week that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, whether it's calorie smart, vegan and veggie, protein plus and more wholesome options. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that don't skimp on flavor. Try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Factor isn't just for dinner. Count on extra convenience any time of day with an assortment of 55 plus add-ons to suit various preferences and tastes. Choose from quick breakfast items, lunch to go, grab and go snacks, and ready to drink cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. With Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. We offset 100% of our delivery emissions and source 100% renewable electricity for our production sites and offices. This December, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash idiots50 and use code idiots50 to get 50% off. That's code idiots50 at factormeals.com slash idiots50 to get 50% off. Let's get back to the show. Uh, church announcements. Nyla, you got any church announcements? I do, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm starting a residency in Brooklyn at this spot called Babel. So if you guys are in New York City, definitely pull up on me. Um, it's all women DJs, all women hosts. And it's actually a members-only spot, so you kind of got to follow me, hit me, I'll put you on the list. But we have a party on the 13th. I also have a vision board party since you know it's a new year. We all got to set our goals January 21st. And then our next um, Pass the Ox Live, which we are rebranding, will be the first, I mean, I'm sorry, the last week of January um, in L.A. for Grammy weekend. So it's a pretty big show. We got some. Some big artists hitting the stage. Word. And you know why I'm here, because he's not ready. Make sure you guys follow my podcast at WATTLK. We need to talk. I drop okay. two episodes a week, you know, interviews. They've been doing really, really well. My Skill of Baby one is doing phenomenal, so check it out. I think it's pretty funny. Yeah, man. That's Big Nyla. Uh, I just want to thank everybody, man. It's been a great year. Um... You know, a lot of a lot of content we put out this year, you know, not just from, you know, Breakfast Club. You see, you know, I got my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing with Simon & Schuster. We put out Invisible Generals by my man, Doug Melville. That is available in bookstores uh, right now. Also on Audible, we put out uh, Unleashed for Love this year. Salute to my good sister, Alicia Renee. Salute to Serena Wesley. Audio scripted sitcom. You know, uh, thank you to everybody who'd be leaving comments and reviews on Audible about that. Uh, Broke Down Profits. This is a crime crime thriller. You know, written by my man S. A. Cosby. You know, starring uh, Brian Tyree Henry and Dash Polanco, Jonathan Majors. I think Donnell Rollins is on this as well. So listen, I just want y'all to continue to support what it is that we're doing. Go to Audible. Thank you to everybody who, you know, uh, already listened to Finding Tamika in Summer of 85. Salute to everybody who's already picked up, you know, Tamika Mallory's State of Emergency. That came out a couple of years ago. Anita Kopak Shallow Waters. That came out a couple of years ago. And, you know, I even put my books up here, Black Privilege. And uh, shook one anxiety playing tricks on me, man, just because I really do truly appreciate the support because these are the things that are always constantly moving, you know, even when we may not be. <laughs> can I? What? Can I say one thing? Yes, Chris, go ahead. People should really check out the S.A. Cosby. He's really phenomenal. One of the best writers out there right now. I think he's a guy who's really, I mean, he's already broke, right? Like, he's not a secret, but. I think people are going to really have him like on a Walter Mosley level in a year or two. Like Steve, Steve, Stephen King said even, that S.A. Yeah. Cosby, one of his favorite writers. And a very cool guy. Very cool guy from very Virginia. Cool guy. New York yeah. Times, New York Times said S.A. Cosby is the author of the year. Like every single project he's done has already gotten picked up for a TV or film. You know, he did a, a great book called Razor Blade Tears. Um, the other one was all all blacktop. What's the one I just read? Hold on. Oh, let me pull up. Let me let, let, let's 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 love on S.A. Cosby real quick. What was the other one? The other one was uh, something. Black, blacktop sinister. wasteland. I just finished last week. I really enjoyed that. Blacktop wasteland. Um, it's the other one too. The sinners book. Uh, all the sinners bleed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's put out razor blade tears. Blacktop wasteland. All the sinners bleed. 
all his books have already gotten picked up for films and TV shows. Uh, Paramount Plus is actually doing Razor Blade Tears and, you know, Broke Down Profits by S.A. Cosby. We've already... Salute. That's all I'm going to say. Salute to my guy, S.A. Cosby, man. But yeah, just check out everything we're doing on Audible. Like, this, we, we put out some really great work on Audible. This is different. This is an audio documentary finding Tamika is. Audio documentary Summer of 85 is. Audio scripted series sitcom Unleashed for Love is. Audio film series Broke Down Profits is, man. So, you know, salute. What Go. is this? Why is this in a box like That's this? That's the CD version because I couldn't find a book. That's the CD version of... um. You know, shook one. But no, it's just a beautiful thing. To be a New York Times bestselling author, man, and now to have my own imprint, you know, uh, Black Privilege Publishing, and to be able to help other people get their product out, that's an amazing thing. Me and Chris are working on my third book as we speak right now. You guys uh, are changing the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. In a real way. Mm -hmm. Yo, you wrote a book about anxiety. Well, it's different. That's what I'm saying. Books are different. I'm not saying music can't... I'm not saying entertainment and music can't change the world. I'm just saying, like... Creed 3 and Ant-Man didn't. That's all I'm saying. Like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just saying Creed 3 and Ant-Man didn't. That's all. Not saying that Jonathan wouldn't have ultimately did a role that, you know, impacted people in that way. But it's not about what you do in, in entertainment. It's about what you do with that celebrity. Yeah. yeah, it's about what you do with that reach. That's all I'm saying. I haven't seen him, you know... Get to, get to that point yet. But he didn't even really get the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. But that's what I tell everybody. If you got a platform, if you got reach, use it to actually do something that fucking matters. That's all I'm saying. Yo, play my man Drake, yo. Drake gonna fuck around and be my mood all 2024. With this <laughs> I'm not gonna front, yo. I might even get me some little specs to wear at the end of my nose, yo. Please don't. Play Drizzy one. Play Drake <laughs> one time. Play Aubrey Graham. It looks like skin nigga alive. To the Bless rest you. of us. Well, Steph the non-believers, the underachievers, the tweet and deleters. You guys make me sick to my stomachs, fam. Me too, Honestly, Drake. if you guys want to look in my eyes, you guys want to do something? That's guys, right. That's what I thought. They don't want to do mm. a goddamn thing. That's what thing. I thought. The non-believers, mm -hmm. underachievers, tweet and deleters. That's what I, I don't know and who the, the rest fuck he talking you. about, but I know who I'm talking about when I say that type of shit, okay? <laughs> Drake gonna fuck around and be my mood for the rest they of the guy. They say he was talking about Metro Booming. What Metro do? I, I don't know, but Metro Boomin he oh, put out a tweet well, about how his go ahead. something about his album got overlooked and Drake's got praised. I don't know anything about that. Isn't Metro nominated for a Grammy? Did I make this up? I'm not sure. Aren't Metro and Drake nominated for a Grammy? I don't know what it was. Pull that up real quick right, before I look. before I go back to Drake. It ain't even about Drake. It's about what Drake said. Cause I real I, he's nominated for a Grammy, right? True. Yeah, for rap, I think I think he's nominated in the rap album of the year category too. I think, I think rap. Go, pull, go to Gram, go to rap album of the year for the Grammys. Taylor Gang, you got to type it in. Oh. Yeah, type in rap album of the year, two thousand three Grammys. Cause I'm really just I want to prove my I'm, I'm I'm really just pulling this up to say one thing. Okay, on top of best rap album nominee, yeah, Metro Boomin. So Metro Boomin is nominated for rap album of the year. Drake and 21 are nominated for Rap Album of the Year. If, if, I hope they're not beefing over this, because neither one of them should win. Killer Mike should win this hands down. Mm. Killer Mike should win Rap Album of the Year, Michael, hands down, period. But I just like what Drake said, man, because they make me sick to my goddamn stomach, too. Metro Booming <laughs> okay. criticized award shows at large as just politics, citing her lost victories over his album. Yeah, and then he Drake deleted the politics. tweet. See, I don't like that. I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Because you know why I don't like that? Deleting tweets are pointless. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, I know. It's, it's actually the most pointless thing in the world to delete a tweet. You said it. It's out there. People are going to grab it. They're going to repost it. They're going to retweet it. I don't like the backtracking. If that's how you feel, stand on it, mm. Elliot Wilson. That's why <laughs> I don't like oh. Elliot Wilson always apologizing to people after he says some shit. Even if I disagree with what he says, which majority of the time I do, I don't agree with him constantly apologizing. I mean, because, because if you're that person that puts things out there and wants smoke and then apologizes... Every time, why should we believe you in the first place? Well, mm. I think Elliot is a nice person. So I think that once confronted, he feels guilty about what he said. Well, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. 
<laughs> Listen to Juicy J. <laughs> Listen to Juicy J. It's okay to shut the fuck up. But Who's I, telling people they got to talk? But also, I think he feels a way because the climate has changed and he feels like he's not a part of the race anymore. Well, that's silly for him to think that. He's Elliot Wilson. It is silly for him to think. Elliot Wilson has been around a long time. You know, he was the editor-in-chief of Double XL magazine. He launched a fantastic platform with my man B.Dot called Rap Radar. You know, when, when everybody was running to dot-coms back in the day, Rap Radar was definitely one of the ones. You know, he evolved, he turned, he turned that into a, a great podcast with Rap Radar. Like, there's no reason for Elliot Wilson to feel insecure about his position and culture. But guess what? I'm not using that, I'm not letting him use that as an excuse. You know, some shit you should feel bad for, as you just said, Nyla. We, we've all done it. We've all said things where we felt bad. But you can't feel bad for every fucking thing. <laughs> every single time he's criticized somebody this year, he's ended up apologizing. Well, and, Nikki, and I'm not saying nothing to Elliot that I haven't told Elliot. Me and Elliot had this conversation off I think air. the Nikki shit he definitely needs to apologize for. No, because he didn't diss Nikki. He should apologize. He, if, he, by should way, to Kai. he should apologize to Kai. And if he felt like that about Kai, stand on but it. But no, he I, did. The apology did. technically felt it's like it was for them. Kai. It I, felt more to well, no, Kai let me, than... Let me, uh, you're right. Let me take a step back. He shouldn't have been criticizing Kai in the first place. I don't know Kai's not from a can of paint, never met the young man, but I salute that young man for everything that he's built. You know why? Because Kai Sinat is everything we say we want hip-hop to be. Mm -hmm. We say we get tired of motherfuckers talking shit about other artists all the time, beefing with each other. We talk about how we can't stand to see people just going in on rants. God bless you. We can't. We hate to see people going in on rants all the time. Like, everything that we say is negative within the culture. Kai ain't doing none of that. Kai is fucking soul train. <laughs> Kai is soul train. His streams are always positive. Streams are positive. You go watch Kai tonight, you see him dancing, having a good time, listening to music. What could you say negative about that? That's why it's just pure hate. And I don't like hate. I like constructive criticism, you know? I like people who, you know, can look at something and, and, and give a nice, objective take on it. What Elliot did to well, Kai Sinat was is... pure hate. There's nobody like, there's nobody that's of Elliot Wilson's stature who should look at Kai and feel threatened in any way, shape, or form. But what if he's looking for something, like he wanted to interview with Nicki Minaj, like he wanted so Kai- So what? To... That's I'm, that's saying he's coming from, but I'm saying he's coming from that perspective that's because he does But that. I feel like all them po older podcast niggas be doing that shit. All them niggas be inciting beefs, and, you know, one person goes sit with this p platform, so then they go shit on the person who just interviewed with them just so they can get a corny. headline and talk. Like, I don't, it's not I, the I don't only think it's just podcasters. I think it's entertainers and creatives. They're yeah, sensitive all, about their work, and then sometimes when they feel a way, they lash out. Like, Drake lashed out against you when you said something negative about him. Was it a lash out? Sure, but that, that's not the same. El that, what Elliot did to Kai is not that. Yeah, but you weren't hating on him. You were giving constructive criticism. And I'm he... always hating on Drake. I mean. <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? Which... How bad I told y'all this? I'm always hating on Drake. What are we talking about? I'm forgetting you the contract they have. Alone. Yeah, because I, I do, so give, I know, I do right? give constructive criticism, but majority of my criticism of Drake, whether you agree with it or not, throughout the years has been hate. Guys. Wow, listen to it. And I don't. And I don't. And by the way, and I, by the way, I, I'm not even. I don't have a reason to hate Drake. I just. It, it's just you know it's from childhood. I, he has I, so you part of the problem. <laughs> no, <laughs> historically, you, light skinned men have always your, gotten teased. You're yeah, your own Elliot. Dark skinned yeah, men have you always really teased part of the light skinned men. And vice versa. No. So you Ain't really no light your trauma on us. Are you crazy? <laughs> Nino Brown stabbed motherfucking <laughs> Nino Brown. What the fuck? <laughs> Nino Brown <laughs> stabbed the pretty nigga from the bank in the hand. It wasn't the other way around. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> all right. No, I'm just fucking with y'all. But no, my, no, I know you're not too. I'm, I don't secret. know if I am or not, but I know I'm serious about what I'm saying about you Elliot. What Elliot did is pure hate on Kai Sinat, and I did not. It's not just Elliot. All these niggas be hating for no reason. Well, I'm it's used, just I, this is this is this is the you're right, but this is the most recent example, and the reason I think this is so egregious is because Kai is 22 years old. Uh, the baby. 20, Kai is the leader of the new school when it comes to hip hop, mm -hmm. period. We don't gotta call it journalism, but he's a hip hop personality. But why is what he doing not journalism? 
I saw him sitting with Nikki, and I saw Nikki telling a story to him that Nikki said she ain't never told nowhere else about the record with Drake, where she said that uh, she broke down that how, how the record was supposed to be on Drake's album, but then she decided to use it for hers and yada, yada, yada. That's, is that not journalism? It is. How is that not journalism? I don't know if that's journalism. I think Why that's not? So what is journalism then? What is journalism? I think you're talking about like a conversation that's just asking questions and getting answers. I think it's like research. Like she's volunteering right. that information versus just Nah, like, but y'all shouldn't put it in a box. It's like if you I'm if you do an it, conduct I, an interview, hey, if you dance and having fun while doing it, but if you're still finding out information about the person that they've never said anyplace else, that's still an interview. You're still finding it. Yeah, so is but, journalism just the documentation of something, or is it actually like doing research and then? Probably a combination of both. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just say, you don't want to call Kai a, a, a journalist. He's a hip-hop personality. And um, what I would tell that young man is stay away from all the sucker shit. You know what I mean? Don't let none of these motherfuckers embrace you. Because a lot of these people is just going to be trying to, you know, uh, uh, suck off suck off your energy and ride your wave. Because if that young man stays on the path he's on, he got $100 million on his schedule in record time. Mm. He's 22 years old. A lot of these people that are in this game right now, they're 35. I'm, I'm OG. I'm 45 years old, but I'm already in the Radio Hall of Fame. I'm already home, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Shit. But for the rest of y'all, <laughs> the rest of y'all that's still, you know, out here figuring it out, working... You're 34, 35 years old. In four or five years, you're going to be 40. Kai's only going to be 26. So be very careful about the things you're saying about the so-called OGs now. Because when you're 40 and Kai's only 26, you're going to look ancient as fuck. <laughs> like ancient. Like beyond ancient. So you just got to be very, very careful, man. I like what Kai Sinat is doing. I don't see how anybody can speak negatively to Kai Sinat in any way, shape, or form. He's literally soul train. Motherfuckers is on there dancing, not caring about how goofy they look. His mom is in there dancing with him. His sister, they're all having a good time. Can you imagine an esteemed... Who's an, who's an esteemed journalist? Like, ima imagine Dan Rather hating on Don Cornelius. If you, just, if you just want to keep it black, who's a, who a great black uh, personality from that time, um, the Soul Train time, uh, Chris? I mean, was it Petey Green? Petey Green was great. The greatest guy, radio personality of all time? The guy in New York who I'm blanking on, who, mm -hmm. um, who's the guy? Frankie who, Crocker. Frankie Crocker. Boom. Ran, but... To the journalism point, you know, the thing with journalism is not about research. It's about also adhering to ethics, essentially, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Exactly. There has to be accountability. There has to be impartiality. Uh -huh. um, you can't take money from sources. Yeah. You have to double check all your sources. If one person tells you one thing, you have to collaborate that with two or three other sources. I mean, that's really the part of journalism that's missing. Because journalism are writers. Essentially, right. like, 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 Elliot is really the OG journalist because he was an editor in chief of Double XL magazine. We're not really journalists. I used to write for Ozone back in the day, but I'm not a, I'm not a journalist per se. Like, journalists write for newspapers, magazines, things of that nature. I guess it's changed in 2023 or going into 24. I would just say hip hop personality. That's what I would say. I would say media personality. I don't think there is really any hip hop journalism anymore. To be honest, I, I mean, no, I don't think you know, so I don't think what Elliot does on Rap Radar is journalism, right? Me either. Um, what I would you maybe classify it? Well, go back to the definition of journalism, Taylor, because Chris is absolutely right with what he with what he what he's saying about. Journalism. What do they say the definition is? She just had it up, but she hates me, so she moves it soon as I want to go. <laughs> she does she does this on purpose. She does this on purpose. She does shit like this on purpose. Oh my god! Journalism. The activity or profession of writing for newspapers, magazines, or news websites are preparing news to be broadcast. Oh, yeah. So technically, yeah, who's no doing one's it? a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, there are no hip-hop journalists. Like, what are we talking about? I do think they have to update the definition, though, because now that people are moving away from newspapers, magazines, and things of that nature, yeah, it's... I yeah. do feel like what um, Jock does... Jock who? Is that how you say his name? Young Jock? He used to work with... No, he used oh, to work with... I thought she was with, trying uh, to catch you. <laughs> Rob Markman. Um, oh, you talk about Jinx? No, 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 Ooh. no. His name is Jock. But he does, Jacques. like... He, like, reports facts. He does them, like, in these quick videos. That's hip-hop journalism. I think Jeff Weiss There's is a journalist. 
Well, it says a journalist or reporter is responsible for researching and writing informational news articles and stories about real events using a fair and unbiased Actually, perspective. there's a lot of people who do that, and then they put it in a teleprompter, and then they put it in video, and then they upload it because people are not reading like we've been talking about. People listen to things. People watch things. So That's there what... are journalism, or there is journalism. It's just done differently. But it, it says that their duties include interviewing experts, gathering firsthand accounts of events, and organizing an outline and to a cohesive, interesting story. So, I mean, you know, a lot of us personalities do aspects of journalism. If you're sitting down, I interview experts all the time in their respective fields, you know. We sit down with artists and we get firsthand accounts of events, you know. Um, yeah, you, you, you also got to remember there was a system in place for decades, right, which was to be a journalist, you know, you wrote for your high school newspaper and then you wrote for your college newspaper and then you went to journalism school and you were instructed in the rules and the ethics and the codes of conduct of being a journalist. And then from there, you started working at a small newspaper. And then if you did well there, you would move up to a major city. And then 10 years in, you'd land at the New York Times, right? Yeah. Like that, that was the path. That path is destroyed right now. Do you think there's a level of, oh, go ahead, ma'am. Oh, I was gonna say, cause when I was in college, I took a journalism class and one of the biggest things that we constantly learned is that like, this is no longer gonna exist because of all the fake news that we were getting. Fake news and access. I mean, the, the scenario I just described, yes, it made people adhere to, you know, certain ethics, but there was a lot of gatekeeping. Everybody couldn't be a journalist, right? Like a lot of people were shut out. And now you got a phone, you're a journalist. Is there a level of elitism that comes with that, though? Like, if you went to school... There was, and, sure. ...and you were in a certain era... Sure. Not anymore. Yeah. Now it's clout. Clout is a new... Elite. Right. But no, in the day, sure, right? Like, maybe you couldn't afford to go to college. Maybe you weren't able to get into grad school. You know, maybe you couldn't afford the prices they were paying at these newspapers. So, yeah, there were only a select amount of people who got to, quote, tell these stories. Now everybody can, and that's great. The problem is... You could ask any of the so-called, this isn't just hip hop, right? Like you could ask anybody online who has a, a voice and influence and say, well, what are, you know, you have a responsibility now. What are those tenants of journalism? They don't, they have no idea. No idea. Would, I can would tell you say you a journalist and a reporter is synonymous? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would. Yeah. Because yeah. they, huh. they, 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 they call journalists reporters. That's what a journalist is. They say a journalist. Well, I think a reporter has even more duty to be independent, fair, and to work sources, right? Like on ground. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, listen, I don't know what you call him. All I know is Kai Sinat is that guy. And man, you know, Elliot just showed a level of insecurity that I, I, I don't want any of our OGs to have. You can see it, man. There's so many of our OGs that reek of insecurity. They're not comfortable with who they are. They're not comfortable with their place, you know, in, 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 in the current landscape. But that's because y'all keep looking at the landscape. And, and now that you said it earlier, running a race. Why are you running a race? <laughs> and also, can like, I say life this? Life is a marathon. Elliot has real skills to share with people, right? Yes. Like, I did a real investigative journalism piece for The Source on a guy named John Forte, who probably nobody knows about anymore. Of course. Come on. That was John. But he got arrested Jesus. in a major cocaine distribution right. charge. I, Elliot was the editor-in-chief. I did real reporting. I was getting wiretaps. I was getting tapes. They asked me to testify in a federal cocaine trial. Like, it was real heavy-duty investigative reporting. Elliot can do that. He knows about that. That's He built that magazine. He's just got to stick to so, but, what but, he knows. But to, say, to that point, why compete? Why are you, why, compete? why, why, why he do probably you think you're competing there's, with there's, ties and not? Why compete? Yeah, no, I agree with I you. Just, it's just silly. But when's that, the last time you've read an investigative I, piece like I, that? I read them all the time. But and not only do I read them all the time, those are the things that are turning into IP. But, like you, got, you, got, you got places like the New Yorker and Variety, uh, uh, um, New Yorker, Variety, and somebody else I'm missing, but you have these people who are opening up production companies because these journalists and reporters have Vulture. done these in-depth... Vulture, that's what it is. Have done these in-depth stories and they're turning them into documentaries. Mm. Like, y'all got to think bigger. Stop yeah. looking at the fucking nigga net and thinking, yo, man, I want to go viral. <laughs> well, no, I, the stuff y'all doing, y'all can actually make real money I off think, with IP. I think that's the message to Elliot is just stop looking at the nigga net and think of your work more indefinitely, but I think he probably just feels unappreciated because, like, the shit that you're saying, that shit takes time. That takes, takes time resources. and effort. And he's, resources. Very hard. It's very he's, hard. he's done it 
But niggas don't care about that because, like you said, niggas don't read. Who so it's no, like, no, 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 so no, 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 no. He's very good at it. A lot of these, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a certain sector of people who don't read. We don't, we can't generalize everybody. What Elliot does is very valuable. And if Elliot did more of that, like, I would love to see it. I think like, he don't get the praise for that type of work. People who are doing that work don't get the praise. I, by who? Who? When, you, when we say don't get the praise, what by who? The last journal, who's the last, we couldn't even name a uh, fucking Megan journalist. Megan Kunif, I believe her name is, who covered Name a black journalist. She's a reporter, though. Praise. All right, but people people gave her praise. People followed her coverage. Name a black journalist that people let me, praise. Let me tell you something. To go back to the point we just talked about. These people who are doing this real investigative journalism, you know, like something like a, a finding Tamika, like Erica Alexander did and Color Farm Media did for Audible. Those are the people that are getting great deals to turn that content into TV, film. Like somebody is going to, it's probably, you know what, it's, going, it's probably going to end up being Vlad. Salute to my guy, Vlad. Y'all can hate on Vlad all y'all want. It's probably going to end up being Vlad. The person from hip hop who's documenting all of these different stories, I mean, everything from China Mac to the Keefe D shit and all of that, he already gets calls, just like we all do, anybody that has content. You know, you always get calls to license the content for documentaries and stuff. Somebody's gonna come to Vlad and say, hey, that China Mac thing you did, man, we wanna turn that into a movie. Like, that whole conversation you had with him, that is actual, say what you want, that's journalism. That's actual reporting. He's getting a first-hand count of events from people about their stories and their situations. Do not be surprised if if, if Vlad TV does what the vote what Vulture is doing, New Yorker, somebody else I just named. Who else did I just name? I can't remember. All of those people are taking their IP. They've started production companies, and they're taking the IP from these investigative journalism stories that they did, and they're turning them into TV and films and everything else, okay. and these production companies is buying them. It's smart. Go look at what ABC News is doing with documentaries, true crime documentaries, and they going to podcasts. Like iHeart and uh, ABC News partnered on, um, what was the name of the podcast? I can't remember it right now. Uh, Bear, bear something. It was a true crime podcast. But it, they, ABC News came, took that true crime podcast and turned it into a documentary that's on Hulu right now. Don't be surprised if Vlad TV is the person that, you know, that ends up happening, happening for because of the hip hop journalism that he's doing. But Vlad's doing it on a platform. In a new way. Yeah, he's doing it in a way where he still gets clout from it. And Absolutely. I think that's what Elliot that's where is Elliot trying is to do. Frustrated but that's what Elliot should be doing. Elliot, I think Elliot, he's Elliot, trying. I think Elliot he's should trying. be doing. He's doing that with Rap Radar when he's yeah. doing interviews. But he should be doing those in-depth sit-downs no, the way Vlad does for I Vlad think TV. He could also, even just take some of his older work that he's done before, some of the pre-recordings that he turned Absolutely. into clips, turn those into like TV shows or something. And nostalgia is always going to be it. Yo, you can't. <laughs> Nala, you are so right because there's certain things that we will never be able to do. Somebody like Angie Martinez's catalog is platinum. Mm -hmm. Triple platinum. Diamond. Because there's she got interviews that nobody can ever get ever again. Yep. She sat with Tupac for hours yep. and never put it out. She sat with Biggie countless amounts of times. Like, when you see... And pivotal moments. Pivotal too. fucking moments. When, when R. Kelly gets pepper sprayed at the garden. They both go to Angie's show. She documented it in a book, but that's the kind of content and material that not only will be a book, it'll be a movie one day. TV it'll be a TV show. show. It'll be in a docuseries. You just don't know. Like, go back and look at your catalog. Instead of looking at what the brothers that are just starting, like, why would I look at Kostanat and hate? Kostanat is just getting started. Mm -hmm. I, got a, I got 30 years of catalog. I got 30 years of my own shit. Focus on that. That's why God don't be blessing a lot of people, man. God don't be blessing a lot of people because you don't appreciate what you've, what you've done and you don't appreciate where you are. And I'm not just talking about Elliot. I'm just talking about people in general. When you're looking at the next person and you're looking at somebody like a, a young person on the come up and you already trying to figure out ways to stop them, God is like, well, damn, what have I done for you mm. your whole life? Now you don't care about that no more. You feel insignificant because, Someone else because somebody else is moving now. So you're not even taking into account you're still here, <laughs> you're still in the space, and you got what that young man can only dream of, which is 20, 30 years of catalog? The fuck are y'all doing, y'all? You gotta cut it out. You gotta stop. Priorities. You gotta fucking stop. Let's pay a bill. Pay a bill, and then we come back and talk about that on um, Flagrant. DoorDash! Oh, man, salute to DoorDash, okay? 
probably the greatest food delivery service of all time. Everyone deserves to feel like a VIP. With Dash Pass from DoorDash, you can. Dash Pass members get $0 delivery fees and up to 10% off eligible DoorDash orders, including groceries, drinks, personal care items, and more. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code IDIOTS and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. Dash Pass makes delivery even more worth it, helping members save more than $35 per month on average. Plus, Dash Pass delivers way more than just tonight's dinner, including special access to experiences, promotions, and Dash Pass exclusive menu items, all for only $9.99 a month. Sign up for Dash Pass now and you'll get your first month free. Put a little joy back into your schedule. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code IDIOTS and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass with code IDIOTS. Subject to change, terms apply. Sign up for more. Become a Dash Pass member today. Yo, salute to Blue Chew, man. I want, I want Blue Chew to know that because of the advertising they've done on podcasts like Brilliant Idiots and, you know, other podcasts, but I really think Brilliant Idiots, you know, uh, and Flagrant, I, I say Flagrant too as well. People think that when we say Blue Chew, we're talking about Viagra. They think that they, they think the nickname for, for Viagra is Blue Chew. No, Blue Chew is something totally different, okay? And it's a unique online service that delivers Blue Chew right to your door. Blue Chew has the same ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises, okay? The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared Paired and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package, okay? And we've got a special deal for all our listeners. Try Blue Chew, try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code IDIOTS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code IDIOTS to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. Let's get back to the show. Alex Media. Uh, Alex, y'all had academics on Flagrant too. Yeah. Did you hear it? Alex wanted me to talk about this. He wanted me to talk about Elliot Wilson. Why are you front? I gave him what he wanted. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I give you what you want, oh, Alex. So we didn't speak about it and say you had some choice words. We did. I mean, I had some thoughts. All right. What are your thoughts? I'm curious just to hear what- About what, though? About what part in particular? Not just in general, because uh, you came up I'm during just happy the interview. To be in the, I'm honestly just happy to be in the conversation, mm -hmm. meaning that, you know, first of all, you know, always salute my guys, salute to you, salute Schultz, you know, Akash, Mark, everybody for, for holding it down for me. But you can only hold it down with facts, which you did. Yeah. Um, but I would say that I'm just happy to be in the conversation. You'll never hear me say I'm the greatest anything of all time, you know? And, and you'll never hear me say I'm the greatest radio personality of all time just because I have too much respect for the OGs that came before me. And I, I genuinely don't feel like that. I'm just happy to have put in the kind of work and, you know, created the kind of content that has me in the conversation. If you ask me who my favorite radio personalities of all time are, I'm going to tell you P.D. Green. I'm, I've always told y'all that. Y'all should go watch his movie, um, uh, uh, Talk To Me. Because, you know, Akash, I, I heard Akash say that Howard Stern had a, a, a New York Times bestselling book and then it turned into a movie. What other radio personality had that? P.D. Green. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic book, you know, um, a fantastic movie. Talk to me. It stars Don Cheadle as P.D. Green. Taraji P. Henson is in it. It's a great movie, and you'll see why I say P.D. Green is my favorite radio personality of all time. P.D. Green also had a cable access show. If I'm not mistaken, the first time Howard Stern was ever on TV, it was on, you know, P.D. Green show. My other favorite radio personality of all time, Howard Stern. You know, it's not even it's, it's, it's not even close. So for me, it's P.D. Green, Howard Stern, Wendy Williams. You know, Wendy Williams was one of my favorite radio personalities before you know, her and her husband scooped me up from South Carolina and had me as her co-host. So other, other than that, I got to say Tom Joyner. You know, people don't talk about Tom Joyner the way that they should. But when it comes to being a public service, when it comes to being a public service, P.D. Green, Tom Joyner, the best of the best. But P.D. Green was also what some would consider 
a shock jock. You know what I mean? Even though I feel, feel the things he was saying, you know, weren't um, shocking. He was just speaking the truth. And then I put uh, Angie Martinez. Mm. Well so, done. So that's mine. Those are, those are my personal all-time favorite radio you know, personalities. Um, I give, Can we get I, more context to what was said on the pod? I'm sorry, because I want to know. Who? Now we're talking about it. Howard Stern, Wendy, no, and Charlotte. No, he said someone came on my show and said... Oh, he was, oh, yeah, he was oh. saying how... People try to do that with shows, but if y'all... Y'all know me. I love throwing assists. Like, Andrew Schultz... I knew who Andrew was 10 years ago. We've been doing Brilliant Idiots for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? I knew who Andrew Schultz was 10 years ago. When Chris Moreau, who's sitting right there, came to me and told me I need to start a podcast, and I told Chris why I do morning radio. Why would I want to start a podcast? He was like, man, you need to get in on podcasting. Podcasting is going to be the future. He was absolutely right. I'm glad I listened to him. Andrew Schultz was who I knew I wanted to start a podcast with. Like, you know, Duvall is all the way in Atlanta. Atlanta, Andrew right here in New York. I'm like... We have great conversations. He funny as fuck, smart as fuck. Andrew was doing exactly what I knew he would be doing 10 years ago. Y'all just catching up to the greatness of Andrew's shows. So can I, can I tell another piece of that story? Sure. So you were like, check out Schultz. I went to uh, see him. It was uh, at a bar. It was like the New York Comedy Festival. And he was on a panel with another famous personality, I won't say who, and Schultz killed it. He was easily the dominant voice, the funniest, everything. And I was like, yo, this dude's fucking insane. He's mm -hmm. incredible. And so afterwards, I think you had told him I was coming. I grabbed him. I went to the bar with him. I was like, look, we want to do a podcast. You want to you want to do it with Char? And he's like, yeah, fuck it. Let's go. That was it. Wow. There were other people that we were thinking about that when I approach them, well, why would we want to do that? Can we talk about, fuck it, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two-second yeah. conversation. And people get lost about that. And listen, I hope I hope that everybody that's around me in some way, shape, or form, from the Nihilas to the Schultzes to whoever it may be, I hope that y'all all at some point look at me and say, he's the lackey. <laughs> That's how big I want every single one of y'all to get. But I That's do, the point. I, I love what Schultz But you don't understand that if you're not a person who don't throw assists. I you're was not a, say, you're not a, you don't understand that if you're not a person who, when you build things, you're only thinking of yourself. What do I always tell y'all? If what you build only benefits you, it's not it's big not enough. Big enough. Yeah. Period. You say that, and also what you recently said to me is like, well, what's your intent behind it? And That's I'm right. Like, Damn. So that is now like my word for 2024. One of them is intent. Everything has to be like intentional. Mm -hmm. But what Schultz said with like you being the greatest, I don't think it's something that could be like self-proclaimed. Like you have to let others get it. I would never say that. Yeah, so you got like, to. That's why like my nickname for you is See the Goat. It's mm. just, I feel like you should change your name from See the God to See the Goat because mm. I feel like you're a goat to me as well. But yeah, it would be lame of you to be like, yo, I'm the greatest personality. Cause then you look like you look silly. Then you, you look, look like them. You look dumb. You yeah. just do the work. Put your head down and do the work. I will say one one other thing Ak said that, that was interesting. Ak was saying, because he kept referencing television. Yeah. And he was saying that, you know, Wendy Williams was able to take her radio audience to TV. And Howard was able to take his radio audience to Sirius. I mean, which Makes sense because Howard Stern took his radio show to a radio state, a radio platform. It just happened to be a radio platform that was satellite radio. So, yeah, people would follow him. I think people use their voices in different ways. You know, if if you're if you're if your thing is television, if you want to say, hey, man, people don't follow Charlemagne from radio to TV. It, it, it might be some truth to that. I think you know? it's different demos, though, because I've, I've been with you on all your platforms, and it's a different demographic every time. Like, your late-night show demo is different than your Breakfast Club Absolutely. Demo. Hell, your Brilliant Idiots demo is completely different than both of those demos, so I don't even think that's a fair statement. Absolutely. And even as a content creator, my YouTube demo is completely different from my Instagram demo, which is completely different to the people who listen to me on Sunday night. Like, so that's... Not true. What y'all was saying is was absolutely true, but I, I would I would correct y'all on one thing. Breakfast Club didn't start on YouTube. 
Breakfast Club started on Power1051FM.com. Mm-hmm. So people had to go to Power1051FM.com to get that content. All of those early interviews that people love, like the first Kanye interview, the Dame Dash interview, anything prior to 2016, Breakfast Club didn't get on YouTube till 2016. So from 2010 to 2016, all of that Breakfast Club content was on the dot com. Mm. So people had to go to the dot com to actually watch the interviews. Uh. And, and, and it's, and yo, Andrew or somebody said it. It's like, yo, say what you want about Breakfast Club when it comes to hip hop media and taking that content and being consistent and putting it out every single day. That it, we we were we were we were one hundred percent doing yeah. that, and I think we made that point of saying you took terrestrial radio to the internet, which I don't think I didn't yeah. see any other radio station doing at the time. That's a fact. I mean, that was our whole thing because when I was doing radio in Philly and radio in South Carolina, I was always putting stuff up online. Like, like a lot of my first national looks was because I was posting stuff online. Ye used to do that when she was on Shade Forty Five. Envy would do that when he was on. Uh, 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 serious satellite radio and on, you know, Hot 97. So it's like when we came together, we all do. We got to utilize the internet in order to get, you know, our, our content out there. And so that's why people started going to the dot com and then we started putting content on YouTube. That's why when the breakfast, we're doing a Breakfast Club documentary. The documentary is coming, you know, it's, we're, it's, it's being, we're, it's, it's, it's active, it's in motion. So when we do the documentary. Who's going to play you? No, it's a documentary. Oh, okay. So it's, it's oh. actual... We, but if there's a movie, who's going to play you? I mean... Don't say motherfucking Morris <laughs> Chestnut. Morris Chestnut would be too, he's too, old, he's too old to play me. You know? like, <laughs> but he could. <laughs> Continue on with your point about the my, my My thing is... You know, what, what I was saying? My thing is... <laughs> That we uh we we were we were putting it on the dot com. Damn, I lost my train of thought. We were putting it on the dot com, and then it eventually, you know, went to YouTube. He lost his train of thought. Uh, all, all, <laughs> all, but but all of this all of this will be told on thing. But oh, about movement, right? I use my voice to move people for different things. I think people sometimes forget television is just another thing that I do. Mm. We do. Breakfast Club. We've been doing Brilliant Idiots for 10 years. I chose I want to do a network. Black Effect Podcast Network. You can go buy this hat right now on Black Effect. Oh, blackeffect.com. It's Black Effect hat with Mitchell and Ness. You know what I mean? Yeah, (laughs) blackeffect.com. The merch is available. Mitchell and Ness, Black Effect hat. But I wanted to start a podcast network. Mm -hmm. We got 28 shows under the podcast network. Black Effect is at a billion downloads. Right now, we're doing great with the podcast network. SBH Productions with Audible, Finding Tamika, Summer of 85, Unleashed for Love, Broke Down Profits, plenty more to come. Books, you know what I mean? Not just my own books. Tamika Mallory, Anita Kopak, Doug Melville with a lot more to come. When y'all, I got a lot of different stuff down the pipeline. So I use my voice to move people in different ways. What we talked about earlier, when we talked about, uh, you know, when you get to a certain position, you know, you have to use... Your, your, your voice to be of service. Yeah. I chose to talk about my mental health journey and move people towards going to therapy, you know, finding healing. So using your voice to move your audience just to another platform to benefit you, that's not the only way to use your voice. Yeah, even the doctor I went to was like, ever since Charlamagne started talking about this, more people have came in and asked Dr. Puma. Yeah, I was like, damn, at the doctor's office, people were talking about things the, like this. The doctor that we talked about, Soren, Soren Medical, mm-hmm. you know, when we that's where we went to go get our CT scans for our hearts. Yeah, he's he's had an influx in, in business. But my point is, that's that's how you use your voice. Like, that. Like I understand what Ak was saying, but that's not the only measure. Just saying, hey, I did radio, so now I go do TV I, I, you know, I use my voice to move a lot of different things. Also, we're in a different climate. Like, different platforms don't hold as much weight as they do then. 100%. Like, podcasts hold way more weight than a TV show right now. Depends what the show is. Because there's still some TV shows that hold a lot of weight. But, you know, like, yeah, to your point, to your point, yeah. I mean, you know, there's not, there's not too many big, who's, I can't think of a platform in media 
Well, I can't think of a, a show on TV that has a bigger well, you know what? reach than Joe Rogan, maybe. Reality TV shows do well. Mm. But even reality TV shows, they're, they're like its own uh, universe. Like Bravo. Absolutely. Anything else, Alex, from this conversation? Nah, that was it. Come on, man. I gotta go. Alex, peace, my guy. Safe travels. Happy holidays. I truly just appreciate being in the conversation. If that's the if that's the debate, if the debate is who's the greatest radio personality of all time, and is it you know as people talk about me, Howard, and Wendy, I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep working. Look at that. I'm in the Radio Hall of Fame. Yeah. We flex. all know how it is too. Howard and Wendy is too, and it's it's crazy because I did I did Wendy's acceptance speech. I think it was 2000, 2006. I introduced her when she got inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. And I remember just sitting there thinking, I'm going to be in the Radio Hall of Fame one day too. And guess what? I'm in the Radio Hall of Fame. All praise due to God. Um, yeah, this is bad, man. Bad. What's that? Um, pull up the video, Taylor. It's not, it's not bad. It's just I, I understand what Taraji coming from. Salute to Taraji P. Henson. She broke down crying in the middle of an interview and discussing her financial situation and pay she receives as an accomplished actor, the math ain't math, and every time I negotiate, it's like I'm starting from the bottom. Can you find that, Taylor? That's ridiculous. Taraji, you had the audacity to say you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um, mm. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. Mm -hmm. The math ain't mathing. Mm -hmm. And when you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Mm -hmm. Big bills come with what we do. Yes. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up, there's a whole entire team behind That's us. Right. Yes. They have to get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not going to appreciate that if you look at it through the lens of celebrity. Because the first thing you're going to say is, $10 million? Like, she's like she crying over, you know, but, but no. That, that, that is anybody who's working. Everybody feels, you know, underappreciated. You know, people feel underpaid. You know, especially if you constantly work and work and work and work, because that what she does is very exhausting. You think and it's not? It's not like she gets a bi-weekly check. So even out of that's that, right. that's like a large lump sum that she has to that's get right. off of and figure out how to make ends meet. That's right. Month. And those assistants and those lawyers and those managers and agents and everybody else, they get paid whether you whether you working or not. So you got to find a way to, you know, keep that income coming. So I, I get it. I mean, all she's basically saying is she's overworked and underpaid. Who can't, who can't relate to that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at Taylor. Taylor about to cry now. I am. It's sad. No. It is sad. You know? And, and, and you, you overworked, underpaid. You know, you don't necessarily feel appreciated. So I get it. I get it. And I mean, you know, we can shower Taraji with all the love in the world. That ain't, gonna change the that ain't gonna change the fact that she's overworked and underpaid, you know? So, salute to Taraji P. Henson, man. That is, yeah, that's that's sad. Uh, what else we got, Taylor Gang? One, a better note. We need Black Hollywood. Um, I don't know. I don't, <sighs> well, you wanted to talk about which one? Because if, if we are doing our own things and we support our own shit, our dollar... Not really. I don't think that, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's no. necessarily true. We say that shit, but a lot of these motherfuckers just gonna get in position and do the same thing that these corporate people are doing now. That's why, yo, y'all, listen, y'all can say what y'all want about Tyler Perry. I bet you, if, I, I, I didn't see the whole interview, but I bet you if they had a conversation with uh, Taraji and asked her who, who gave her her biggest check, Tyler, Tyler goddamn Perry. Because, and, and you know, for anybody out there in Hollywood, y'all can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but there's this thing called a precedent. And basically, when somebody pays you something for a film, that is your precedent. That's what you go and you negotiate with. So if, if, if Tyler says, hey, Taraji, I'm going to give you 4 or $5 million for a film, now her precedent is set. That's what she negotiates with from here on out. I, and I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I've heard 
Taraji say that before. I definitely know that happened with Tiffany Haddish. Mm. Taraji said that the biggest check she ever got, I, I believe, was from Tyler Perry. So to, to, to your point, Nyla, yeah, you do need... It's like we value each other. But we have to value each other. You can't just be the black face in that position who still underpaying people, right, you know right. what I mean? Overworking and underpaying people. You still got to, you you ha, you just have to, you, like you said, you got to value folks. Like, it don't matter being in a position if you're not going to value the person. So if the movie hits number one, they don't get any of that, it's all, it only goes to the right. Depends on like, what kind of contract you got. You know what I mean? You might get a bonus for the movie hitting number one. You might have some equity in the film. It just depends. Like, Get Out was a film where people in Get Out had equity, and that's because Jordan Peele didn't have... Because even when the budget, up front, to pay everybody. Because yeah. even when it plays on, I think on HBO now, like they don't get a they check get residuals, for but nothing crazy. But it just depends. Just like it, it really truly depends on what your role is on a film. Like if you're an EP, or like I said, if you you know help finance the film in some way, you had some type of maybe even sweat equity in it. Like it just depends on what your role is. If you just a a talent, nine times out of ten you might get some residuals, but that shit ain't nothing crazy. Hmm. You know. You can't just be telling, man. This is what the whole strike was about. This is, yeah, literally, I'm, this is I'm literally what the whole strike was about. Because does TV shows make it... Like, would an actor rather be part of a TV show than a movie? I'm Depends what the show, show is. I if, think, you, uh-huh. if you want a show like a Seinfeld or Friends or one of those shows that was on for, for a long time and then it gets picked up in syndication... You know, like those guys, those guys don't never got to work. Seinfeld don't never have to work another day in his life. But nobody, the cast but, of Seinfeld probably don't have to work. But another that's day. what I, I guess I'm being confused because how much did they get paid up front then? What do you mean? Because when you're talking about Taraji getting paid, like she has, what did you call it? Because uh, some people get residuals and some people don't get residuals, so it really just depends on what's in your contract. Yeah, yeah well, fix the contract. Yes. This is it. No. It's just all about how you negotiate, man. I don't know. But but also, too, it's just like, not even just how you negotiate. I think what Taraji is talking to, too, is, you know, the larger social issue of, you know, women being underpaid. You know, women women, women being underpaid for doing the same amount of work that, uh, that a man does. Yeah, that Benjamin you Button know? film that she was in. Yeah. One of the largest grossing films, and she, like, got paid a quarter of what her co-host got. Shit crazy, man. And times is hard for everybody. You know, like nobody wants extra bills. That's why Anthony Edwards wants an abortion. Let's let's click on this. Um, what is what is it, Taylor? What happened? I don't, I don't even know the story. I'm just looking at the headline. Anthony Edwards addresses women's abortion claim. So basically, he was cheating on his girl. Black men don't cheat. Um, Stop. All right. So he was cheating on his girl. Let me go back. Anthony, that's a funny. This headline. is his girl. See, this is when neighborhood talking shit is funny. Go back to it. Let me read the headline. Anthony Edwards issues apology for telling his little side piece to get an abortion. All you ain't say it like that. <laughs> All women should be empowered to make their own decisions. So this is his girl. Beautiful. Beautiful, Beautiful black queen. She's already pregnant. He cheated on her with this woman. What is she on? Yo, why are niggas always cheating when their girl is pregnant? I don't, that's just disrespectful well, like, as hell. That man. is the worst time possible. Um. Well. What the hell is that? Exactly, you know I mean? What's the what word for? <laughs> Yo. That's not even funny. I you just did that to sicko. piss the room off. Come on, stop. <laughs> you think I didn't know how y'all was going to react to that? Man. Stop. <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> Okay, so these are the, um, this is his statement. But that's why y'all, women got to say we pregnant. Because if you pregnant by a man and, you sure. know, you're not in the mood to have sex and things like that, even though pregnancy sex is amazing, if you're not in the mood to have sex and stuff like that, you got to tell your man we pregnant. So whatever I'm not doing, you not doing. That ain't no Paul pass just because a woman is pregnant. It isn't. That's why it's... It's absolutely you're supposed it's the, to the opposite. You're right. We in this together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why you're supposed to have that belt too. Like whenever me, I feel contractions, you feel it too. What? But men, but men have to think <laughs> about that though. Men can't think, damn, what am I gonna do for the next nine that's months? Yada, yada, men yada. don't think. That's that's a that's a fact. A lot of I'm not gonna generalize all men, but a lot of motherfuckers ain't thinking. So what's the what's the story? He 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 um he just I made comments in the heat of a moment that are not me and not in line with what I believe and who I want to be as a man. All women should be supported and empowered to make their own decisions about their bodies and what is best for them. I am handling my personal matters privately and will not be commenting on them any further 
at any further time. I mean, I don't understand I mean, the problem. So basically, he was telling her to not get the abortion. I mean, sorry, she was. He was telling her to get the abortion, and she was saying it's difficult because Roe v. Wade got overturned. What? What? That's not what happened. Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. What happened? Bring up the Texas. Hold on. Steve Nate Smith said something about it. I just, I mean, what's the what's the problem though? Like, what, like what 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 did he do? He wanted his side piece to get an abortion. That's why I always tell people who are anti, you know, abortion, you ain't never got the wrong person pregnant. That's really all it boiled down Pretty to. Pretty much. Everybody, but all, everybody always disagrees with messages. abortion until they married and they get, you know, somebody on the side pregnant. You got, let me see. Hell no, nah, I can't do this. I still have an appointment on the 27th. He's saying get an abortion, LOL. He handled that wrong. Not LOL. He did, exactly. Not in the text message either. I still have an appointment on the 27th. Hell no, nah, I can't do this. So now what? She said, what a great response. Get an abortion, LOL. Honestly, I had an abortion with my son around two years ago, and I regret it every day. Huh? As in, like, she oh, don't okay. want to get another abortion. Man, you can't force a kid in the world. You don't know what it is yet. That's not the point. I said I had an abortion two years ago, and I regret it. Yeah, but I don't want a kid. Just take the pill. <laughs> you don't care about no one but you. You got the money. What did I say? You got the money. What's the hole up? Because now you finna make a problem. How do we know this is him? I mean, this well, he did apologize for it. You're right. Finna make what a problem exactly. I don't give a fuck. I've been nice this whole time. I don't bother you. I don't cause problems. Nothing. Don't speak to me like that. I told you I would because you want me to. So that's that. You talking about a life. Just be some... I don't know. Here's the thing, man. Like he handled this all wrong. A woman call you, say she's pregnant. All you should say is, what? so what do you want to do? Exactly. That's I, it. But at the end of the day, too, I feel like it's both people's responsibility. Like, why are y'all having sex unprotected? Or why are you not having backup plans? Because raw sex feels amazing. But still, like, it's always going to be some type of... I mean, yes, every time you lay down with a person, that is the re that's the consequences. You might get somebody that pregnant or, STD. or an STD. Right. Yeah. But, is this, but I'm just saying it's both fault. Raw I'm sex trumps all of that. <laughs> it does. And y'all know it. Because the reality of the situation is... No, you haven't. I have. the, the reality of the situation is we know these consequences every time we lie down, but we still choose to do it. Why? Because it feels that good. But also... Now you know why crack is crack. What? Don't, don't try to... Break just try to we're not, we're not there no more. Let it go. We are not there anymore. <laughs> okay, but... Yeah, so that's the whole thing that's going on. So well, what's the outrage, though, about it? Anything? Stephen A. About, oh, oh, what Stephen, Stephen A. basically said. was like, yeah, she it. shouldn't have shared private text messages. Pretty that was like his whole point. Well, Stephen. shit, I don't want to see half the shit y'all show all the time. Yes. But yes, I agree. Stephen A. is 76 years old. Let's, hear, let's hear this. He's 76? No, he's not that old. But he oh. Anthony Edwards had to apologize because he is a public figure. Having said that, once again... Here's the bigger lesson to be learned. Guard who you deal with. Once again, I'm singing that same old dance. It's none of our damn business. Who Anthony Davis is screwing around with, who he impregnated, he has a relationship with this woman and she put him on blast. She took text messages and revealed them to the public. I'm starting to wonder what repercussions somebody can have for having their privacy violated. That's what I'm wondering about. Mm. I'm not casting any aspersions. We live in a society, ladies and gentlemen, if Anthony Davis wanted her to have an abortion, respectfully, that's his business. We have pro-choice and we have pro-lifers all over the country. And I keep saying Anthony Davis, I keep saying Anthony Davis, I apologize. I mean Anthony Edwards. I'm sorry. He got, he got his I girlfriend got to say Anthony, Anthony, Anthony so Davis' girlfriend swinging on him We're right now. We're <laughs> talking about Anthony Edwards for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Who I really get to talk about. Who I would have loved to talk about involving basketball. But we got to talk about this. Because she <laughs> violated so their private affairs. <laughs> She is a woman. She is free to do what she wants with her own body. This is America. Mm. If she's <laughs> impregnated and she wants to have the child, that is her business. If Anthony Edwards 
does not want her to have the child, that is his business. There's no laws he's violating because he wouldn't want the child. There are pro-lifers and pro-choice folks all over this country. Just like we saw millions celebrating when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade a couple of so years ago. So basically saying it's none of our business. We saw millions yeah. lamenting it. Okay. She shouldn't have showed the Him. text. But he also shouldn't have texted that. He also shouldn't. But I wouldn't have known that she didn't her. show the text. A hundred thousand dollars is crazy <laughs> for an abortion. I don't like this headline because it's not a hundred thousand for an abortion. It's three hundred and fifty dollars for an abortion. I don't know how much they cost now. And three hundred fifty thousand for an abortion. I mean, three hundred fifty dollars for an abortion. And $999,650 for her pocket. That's what that is. Because abortions don't cost no $100,000. Stephen A. Smith isn't wrong, but he's not being realistic. And the reason he's not being realistic is he's got to understand the era that we're in. Yeah. Everything Stephen A. is saying is absolutely correct. It is none of our damn business. None. I wish people didn't share this type of shit, but they do. And they will continue to because that's the era that we're in. In. Well, maybe he's trying to shame so that people stop. No, I think what we what what mm. people need to stop is sneaking around. What right. people need to stop doing is thinking that they're getting away with things. You got a woman at home. Exactly. <laughs> Black men don't cheat. Black men don't cheat. People not even mad about him cheating. They mad about the girl being pregnant. Like but that. my point is that wouldn't happen if he didn't cheat. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. That's all I'm simply saying. Like, and I, I get it. I understand, you know, how, you know, biology and shit works. I get it, you know what I mean? But my thing is simply this. You also know the world that we're in, and you know who you are. Yeah. Anthony Edwards, you know who you are. You not these regular, degular motherfuckers. You are a superstar basketball player for the Minnesota Timberwolves. You know how much is on the line. You know what yeah, you're- Yeah, he's young too, isn't he like 20 he, something? Yeah, but so what? Like, uh, we, we gotta stop using that young thing as an excuse because there's so many NBA players that have also been young who did not make those same mistakes. Yeah. LeBron James should be your ball king. For all you motherfuckers that still like to scream that young shit, LeBron James should be your bar. Do you know how many basketball players came from high school to the league who didn't have those problems? The, the 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 Kevin Garnett's Dwight, who Dwight Howard came from terrible. Uh, terrible. <laughs> ter 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 he didn't have him young. He's only ter 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 terrible example. Just a terrible example. Uh, 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 Kevin Garnett, Tracy McGrady, Kobe Bryant. I mean, you know, Kobe had his issue once saying. he was in the league, but from from that time when he first started, eighteen to however. Oh yeah. Oh, he was he wasn't getting in no trouble. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody just has to discipline themselves more. Steph you, Curry. You know what's at stake. Steph, you know what's at stake. <laughs> Saying people are young, that shit don't fly. Because you ain't young enough to take that $100 million check. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no. Salute to Nicki Minaj, too, man. Nicki Minaj sold 220,000 records. She hasn't put out an album in five years. You know, she's breaking all kind of records on the Billboard charts. I think that is a... a that's, that's very impressive. You know, Nikki one of them ones. Like there's about, there's five people who came from that era who we, who we you know, put up there. And it's, it's Drake, of course, it's Kendrick, of course, it's Cole, of course, it's Future, of course, and it's Nicki Minaj. And you know, Nikki's still one of them ones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Five, five years, he ain't put out an album in five years. The bars came through, 220,000 copies sold. You know, toward, say 228,000. Number one album in the country. What she's just—I think she's the the woman with the most number one albums yeah. ever, or something like that. So salute to Nikki, you know, and salute to the good brother Scarface too, man. Scarface's NPR Tiny Desk concert, you know, people are saying that's the best hip hop Tiny Desk ever. I tell you what, I ain't never watched Tiny Desk before Scarface. Really? No, and I watched it the other night, and I went down a rabbit hole. I watched Wu Tang. I Jasmine watched Sullivan. Um, that's the best. The oh, Tang was great. You watched the Juvenile one. You did. I never watched it in full. Oh, yeah, Juvenile. You did, did I? yes. Oh, I, I might have. Okay, okay. You're right. Oh, you're right. I did watch Juvenile. I'm, yeah, you, you, I'm, I'm bugging. But I, you know, I, I salute Scarface just because I got Scarface in my top five. Y'all, I tell y'all all the time, I got a top seven favorite MCs of all time. And it's Nas, Jay-Z, and it's not in no order. Nas, Jay-Z, Ghostface, Scarface, Killer Mike, T.I., Jeezy. That's my top seven of all time. So when I see Face getting his flowers, I'm like, yeah, Face one of them ones. Face provided the soundtrack to my life growing up. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and the, the illest thing about Scarface that I love the most, he's nothing like his music. 
<laughs> you know how Scarface music is like dark and he's like always telling a story and it's like always like a cautionary tale. Scarface is the most fun loving, happy, unserious, wanting to crack jokes all the time person you ever gonna meet. And that makes me love that man even more, man. So salute to Brad Jordan, man. I really wish uh, Scarface and Willie D would, you know, get on better terms and start doing the Ghetto Boys Reloaded podcast. You know, we had the Ghetto Boys Reloaded podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. It was a fantastic podcast. You know, they had the, the last episode they did together was Willie D addressing his issues with Face because Face did the Grammy celebration uh, without him. And they haven't done one together since, but I really wish that, you know, they could put that behind them and uh, get back to doing the podcast. Because they were there. They, not only are they amazing storytellers, you know, people get on there with, with Face and Willie D and they, they say things they don't say other places. So salute to them. Um, Meek Mill <laughs> celebrated the passing of Pennsylvania's probation reform bill. Salute to Meek. Um, I also have to say D1, my guy. Salute to D1. D1, the criticism you had of Meek and, you know, Ross and others, it's moments like this that I wish you were just as loud about, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, this is real world change. What we were talking about all podcasts, real world change. Go back to the headline, Taylor. Go back to the, the Meek Mill headline, please. Taylor hates me. Taylor hates me. She just hates me. She hates me. She, just, she, got, she gotta hate me. She gotta hate me. There's no way. There's no way you did that on purpose. You, just, you gotta hate me. It's impossible. It's impossible. See? It's, okay. Meek Mill um, celebrated the passing of Pennsylvania's probation reform bill. What is that? What did that say? SB 838. The bill allows criminal records in Pennsylvania to be sealed from public view and allows fewer people on probation are in county jails. The House and Senate passed the legislation. Uh, the new probation law aims to limit the length of probation and prevent people from being sent back to jail for minor violations. Reports also state Pennsylvania has one of the highest rates of residents who are incarcerated or under supervision during a press conference. Meek became emotional. Let's listen to the press conference, man. I didn't ask for this position. I don't want to do it. It's not for clout. It's something that I stand for. It's something that I live for. And I appreciate y'all for helping me. Wallow back there. Wallow, come here, Wallow. Thank you. Thank you. I want to use my man as another example because he, he's somebody else that came from greater sport. And he just was posting video with just motivational quotes. And I used to just post wild up because we don't really got people where we come from that come from those environments and can change up and still hold the weight. I could be in a room with, it don't matter if it's people from my neighborhood or if it's people like Michael Rubin or if it's people like the governor and still be myself and still contribute to my neighborhood. So I just wanted to get that out and just let that out because I never really think much. And changing the law today will really like help a lot of young men. I had a lot of friends die, Philadelphia, go to jail, and I'm here to represent for them today. I can't even really use my voice. Thank you Man, salute to fucking Meek Mill. Man, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. That is using your platform for real world change. And not only just using your platform, using your experiences, yep. the things that you've been through. Like Meek was on probation for mad long, ended up going to jail for popping a wheelie that ended up being a violation of probation. And so, he decided to turn his trauma into a testimony that is now turned into legislation. Like me said, like, yo, he didn't ask, you know, to be in that position. But guess what? God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So y'all can say whatever y'all want about Meek Mill and y'all can say, you know, uh, Meek raps about this, Meek raps about that. Hey, man, maybe... We, we say God works in mysterious ways. I don't know. Like, he's using that platform, yeah. you know, to be able to help 
pass legislation. And that's going to help a lot of other brothers, man. And we also got to be patient with our people because you just don't know what people are going to turn out to be. If, I, if I'd have told y'all 10 years ago, Meek Mill would be helping to get legislation passed in Pennsylvania for probation reform. Would anybody have believed me? Nigga, if you would have told me 10 years ago that you would be this version of yourself right now, I wouldn't believe you. First of all, you're yeah. so disrespectful. No. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't, I don't, that was mad sass. <laughs> for no reason. I just, why? Why? Why, why, why I just run into I a shot? It has nothing to do with I'm it. I'm just saying you came a long way. Like, but that's my point. And, 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 yo, I talk about stuff like that all the time because I, I know T.I. 20 years ago. I know, I know that version of T.I. To, to the version of T.I. we see now. I know Gucci Man 20 years ago coming into the radio station terrifying the fuck out of me. <laughs> like, I can just look at I'm, I'm looking at this man. I just know something ain't right, right? Now I look at the version of Gucci now. I know Jeezy from 20 years ago. You don't know who people are going to turn out to be. Be patient with folks, man. I don't give a fuck how old they are, what they doing, everybody's life everybody's testimony can be turned into something like that, man. And to see Meek up there crying, tears of joy, but also tears of grief, because I'm sure in that moment, every single wave of emotion hit him. He probably started thinking about all his homies that died. He probably started, because he told the story about how he used to have to take the chance of violating probation just to take his son to school. Because I think he had to cross state lines or something like that. Like, come on, man, Meek. Deserves all his flowers for that. Salute to me. Yeah. And, I, and, and I love D1. What D, D1's, you know, message isn't wrong. All I'm simply saying is, yo, D1, when you see stuff like this, you got to amplify it because this is the power of hip hop. Like, this is the power of people using their voices. This is the kind of influence that, you know, people like Meek Mill and them have, man. So, you know, salute to that brother Meek. Salute to anybody with a platform that's using their platform, you know, to be of service. This annoyed me. Let's go to Ask an Idiot's Taylor. Can we go to Ask an Idiot's? Okay. Taylor just hates me. <laughs> Yo. Hates me. I'm making sure you it's see. You didn't want to talk about your boy? Oh, let me do some Elevate. I, I No, I actually do not because that is not my boy. Do you want to do, um, can, can we do Elevate? <laughs> yeah. Let's do Elevate. And then we do some Ask an Idiot's. And then we get the fuck on. Salute to my guy, Steve Harvey, man. Uh, big unk. You know, one of my mentors, somebody that I get a lot of great advice from, man, there is nobody out here, you know, uh, doing business quite like Steve Harvey is, man. Um, so I'm here to tell you about another one of Steve Harvey's business ventures, but it's something that's been keeping Steve feeling fresh, keeping me feeling fresh, healthy, and energized lately. It's called Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens, uh, co-founded by Steve Harvey and formulated by Harvard scientists. This game-changing formula boosts your body's mitochondrial production, providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day, okay? 30 superfoods per serving, nine greens per serving, clinically studied probiotics, contains fruits, vegetables, mushroom blend. I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Sometimes it feels like there aren't just enough hours in the day to get everything done, but with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore, okay? This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine, and the best part, it's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water or juice, and you're good to go, and it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out, Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price, all right? Take control of your health today and experience more daily energy with Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens. Go to ElevateU.com, L-E-V-A-T-E-E-Y-O-U.com and use promo code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire purchase. Let's get back to the show. Taylor, let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. Come on, Taylor. Wait, before we do Ask an Idiots, can I say that I, I had called the brilliant idiots fan base misogynistic at one point on this podcast Definitely I was on. Are. And I just wanted to apologize because misogynistic was the wrong word. I should have said chauvinistic. And it's not everybody, but sometimes you guys can give that feeling. And that's just based off the comments. I don't even know why you said that. All you're doing, all you're doing is making the brilliant idiots massive mobilize 
against you right now. No, I don't want them to. That's why I'm apologizing. They don't I care. Don't care. Oh, they okay. do not care. <laughs> so they are not mad. here for your apologies. They are not here <laughs> to be entertained by you in any way, shape, or form. Right. They have already made up their mind. What they're do you gonna, mean? They're gonna they listen have. to. The, they're gonna listen to this podcast and maybe <laughs> even enjoy it and still throw shots at you just because that's the way the world works, Nyla. You know this already. I hate people. You think just because you made complex list of uh, what was it most powerful people in hip hop? What was it? Media. Voices. Media. You think because you made that list, they're gonna be you know give you grace? I would like grace. Huh? I thought you that think, was the whole point of the conversation. You think because you have started one of the hottest you know parties in the city, which isn't even really a party, it's a networking event called Pastor Ox Live. You think people are gonna give you grace? They should. You think because you had your Amazon rotation roundtable show and because you got your Blends and Trends show on Power 105, one they supposed to give you grace? Don't forget I'm also on The Breakfast Club every Friday. That's right. And guess what? You still suck to them. And you're going to always <laughs> suck to them because they've made up their mind. It is what it is. There's nothing you can do. I do, I do, I do see people say differently, though. They'd be like, nah, nah, look, nah, look cool. I like Nyla. I think that's what they should say because nah, I am. It's Why there. are you worried about their opinion? I'm not worried. I'm just apologizing if I offended anybody. That's it. I'm sorry. Never mind. I mean, I'm sure we do have some misogynistic listeners. Not all of them, though. You know? Misogynistic means, like, prejudice against women. See, I had to look up the word misogynistic. I was getting it confused. That's y'all problem. But, y'all motherfuckers just be using words and don't even know the meaning. But I, it, was clo- the, it was close because I feel like misogynistic and chauvinistic could be synonyms, one's just a little more extreme. Okay, I get it. Uh, Ask an Idiot, Sockin.mp4 says, if you were an elf, what would your t- what would your name be? Interesting. Would elves have unique names? You're already the size of one, so. Taylor, wow. you're smaller that than me. That was wild of you to For say. For no reason. Because he does it to me all the time. Uh, all right, we'll pull up penguin names, and let's see what name Taylor would choose if she right? does. I love penguins, elf so I don't give names. a fuck. You are a penguin. I'll be happy feet. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Happy feet. <laughs> you do get penguin energy though. What was that supposed to mean? What would your name What's be? What's that supposed to Nyla? mean? Nyla. Oh. <laughs> um, I had to look up some. What's I need some elf to, names? Inspo. <laughs> Honey Thorn. Mm. Bernard. <laughs> that's good for you. Yeah, I'm Lenard. Because it's close to yeah, yeah, yeah. Buddy. Dobby. Buddy? Yeah, Buddy. That's a famous elf name from the movie Elf. Dobby from Harry Potter. Oh, Dobby, I like that. I, I would, yeah, I'd, I'd probably just be Lenard. I think Lenard is a nice little elf, cool elf name. Lenny. Eh. Eh. I think Lenny is more of an elf name. Nard. Nard. That's Shiny what it would be, up Nard. Tree. Huh? Shiny up a tree? Nard. That's Santa's number one elf. I like Nard. I'm going to go with Nard. Nardo. What, you said yours would be Lard, Taylor? What'd you say? Fight me. <laughs> what? <laughs> What would yours be, Nyla? I like Happy Feet. That was a good one. Happy Feet? Eh. He Not the way she got beat by Schultz in that race. Nothing happy about those feet. <laughs> Sad feet. <laughs> Frustrated feet. <laughs> we still have to re-race, so. No, you don't. Okay. Levi. Levi. Elf Army. Comes from the Elf Army. Spandex. Spandex. That'd I, be a good name for you. Because I'm thicker than you in Spandex. Oh, God. What else we got, Taylor? <laughs> what else you got? Go. Uh, I'm not answering that question. Uh, <laughs> what was your most memorable gift received for the holidays? I don't want no gifts for the holidays. Like, there's literally nothing I want. Like, nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. It'd be hard to oh, think of a gift to give you. So I could cancel with my mom. <sighs> your mom, listen, your mom gives me. <laughs> no. What your you mom gives said. me. Listen to me. <laughs> what your mom gives me is amazing. And she already knows what I want. That's not a gift. I need y'all to put context. That's in a this love conversation. offering. No, what, what he was my he was my dad to punch him in his mouth. Because, what, what because without no, I know y'all, so I know what to talk about. But this conversation sounds he great. He was my dad to punch. What in Taylor's his mouth. mom's giving me is not a gift. It's a love offering. <laughs> my nigga, stop playing with me. <laughs> it is. You wouldn't. Yo. Call, would you call your mama's pie a gift? Even pie doesn't a sound pie like a pie that right she word. bakes, like apple pie and sweet potato pie. Whatever it, it is, is, I just said your mama pie. <laughs> yes, food gasm for sure. And I love it when she cut. I love it when she cuts it for me, it and it's out. already in these Come slices. On. Between food gasm, <laughs> pie. when your mom cuts it into like First the all, perfect stop. V, she never cut a slice for you. So yes, relax. She has. No, she hasn't. She did no, at the radio station one day. She cut it. I mean, it was the perfect. It was v. me then. 
She no, wasn't cutting. I saw her she cut didn't it. Cut. No, she didn't. She even had the spatula. She cut it and then she pulled it up and she said, "Come here, baby." No, she didn't. <laughs> she, said, she said, "She said, come here, Charlotte." She would never disrespect her husband. She said, "Charlotte." I didn't say she. What? What? Why? Why is her why husband? Is cutting a piece and she said, "Come eye. here." Like I wish she. She's would. an older woman. They all call every person Excuse baby. Me. Excuse me. Relax. <laughs> she is Relax. Older, older women my, don't call people but, baby. Yes. But not my mom. Not part of this. She, she only... did call me. Did your mommy no, never called me baby no, Taylor? No, she didn't. Wow. No, she didn't. Wow. You got confused with mama. Wow. But not wow. my mom. Mama, mama definitely called me baby. Mama exactly. Mama, mama definitely, definitely called me baby. but not my mom. I'm not gonna show you the DMs. No, you're so. But I don't have a um, <laughs> I don't have a memorable gift because I don't want anything. Like I like like I don't. I like I like I like doing stuff for the kids. That's the most important. That's the funnest thing to me because you know I got young kids, so there's nothing like watching them. Be excited about opening gifts. Like that's literally the the, the greatest Do you still gift. Buy your kids toys, cause I put a heart to that. Yeah, my, it's funny cause my, <laughs> my 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 wife this year said everybody gets one gift. Oh. Cause it's like yo, they get all year around. That's that's the problem with Christmas. It's like if you if you if you're if you're giving all year round and you're getting what you want all year round, why at the end of the year do I gotta be forced to go out there and find something to buy you? Exactly. Like that's I don't like that pressure. Too. Yeah, I got to go out there and fight people because there's thousands, millions of people all in the city and shit like that just to buy you one gift. Like, well, I don't know. I like people go like online how- now. Why are you still shopping Black Friday. in the store? <laughs> this is a great question. <laughs> Cody.Croft, what crime would you commit if that meant that no one could ever commit that crime again. Cody, I don't know if there's a movie like this, but that is a, this is a fantastic premise. It's a little sick, though. It is, but it's a fantastic premise. Like, what crime would you commit if that meant that no one could ever commit that crime again? The final crime. Would you get caught, though, if you'd made the crime? That's another good point. I mean, it would have to be murder, right? Because murder is the one... Murder, you can't come back from that in no way, shape, or form. I feel like some people. So it would have to be. I, I, it would have to be murder. Like if, if nobody ever got murdered ever again, who would be the person you murder? I already know who I would. <laughs> what? I will you murder see this sick motherfucker <laughs> dressed in all black like the omen. Did you hear this motherfucker? You can take this out. She oh, asked me a question, then stopped it to say, "I already know who I would kill." <laughs> I do. <laughs> who would it be? Um, what's that guy's name that killed Trayvon Martin? Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Not mad at that. Yeah. But I don't wish death on nobody. I also think maybe it would be murder for me if I had to pick one. Probably rape. You would rape someone. No, so nobody deserves that, especially like young kids. That's, I, absolutely, like, that shit kills my heart. Like oh, men yeah, or women. Right. Damn. I, Damn. I feel like that, so you would. So you would have to commit that? No, I know. Oh, I, my I, God. I'm saying for the movie. We talk about a movie, that's, right? Well, you don't have to take this question dark. so literal, Taylor. What do you mean? Jesus, it's a hypothetical. <laughs> you looking at you? You looking at Nile in disgust. Ooh, you no, would do no, that? No. It's a hypothetical question. <laughs> I'm not you do not face. have to take this literal at all. I'm it's just saying a, it's that's dark. That, like, it to is. imagine, this like... This is a fun high question to ask. <laughs> this is a good high question. Cody, this is a good yo. question, yo. <laughs> he probably high right now, honestly, when he wrote this. Ah, uh, child, yeah, because child molestation is crazy. Bad. Yeah, as, as somebody who's been molested as right. a child, yes, I understand. But murder, though? I don't know. Because with murder, like, there's no coming back from murder. So that means people are just gone. You know what I mean? Not saying that that trauma... You've does- also said at one point, in, in the context of a different conversation, that sometimes people know... When it's time to go. What's that movie I watched? Uh, where some people are, and I'm not, I'm not justifying murder at all, but the guy, like, oh, God. Oh, uh, uh, Frailty. Frailty. One of my favorite where movies. Where God was using that person to get rid of people who God needed. Did you watch Frailty? Yeah. Did you like it? It was interesting. You told me to watch it, and, I, I, and it was interesting. Frailty was great. But I'm saying, like. Now, that's a good example, because in Frailty, this dude was committing a crime. Yes. But the but people he was murdering deserved to be murdered. How was According to God's list that he was getting from yeah. God. See, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't even want to dip in that, though, because then, you know, like, the white people who be killing black people be like, I was told by right. whoever yeah. the hell they praising. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's just not justified. Yeah. How old is that movie? Oh, so oh. oh, wow, though. You wild should old. watch it, though. Wow, though. Did you watch Leave the World Behind? Did anybody watch Leave the World Behind? The Obama movie? Yeah. I started it. I didn't finish it. Fantastic film. 
I you think it's fantastic? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it because... It feels awkward. Why? A lot of that stuff has already happened to us. What? Is it fiction or not fiction? <laughs> I mean, it's fiction, <laughs> but it's, it, it's, it's not like that couldn't happen. Uh -huh. Like, when you see Marsha Ali break down the three stages of how you could destabilize a country, and he's like, take away their technology so nobody can use their phone, nobody can contact each other, you take that away... That causes instant isolation. Then the second one was um, misinformation. So you spread misinformation, you know, all over the place. And then the third one is we'll take each other out. It'll be coup de tiles, coup de tiles every, everywhere. You know, we won't be knowing what's going on. Everybody gets on edge. Like, and that's exactly what happened. And it, it happened in the movie in 48 hours. COVID took two weeks to shut, shut, our, shut our whole shit down. Two weeks, the whole country was shut the fuck down. Economy needed a bailout. Within two weeks, America's a fucking house of cards. So when you watch that, when you watch that movie, it's just like, you know, nothing's happening in that movie that um can't happen in real life. Yeah. What else we got, Taylor? Let's do two more. What is the first step in being healthy? Diet. 100%. You know, that is the first step in being healthy. Number one is making the choice that you want to be healthy. Number two is diet, putting the right things in your body, drinking water, getting proper rest. That's it. I'm talking about even before you get to working out, anything else, diet is the first step in being healthy, physically healthy. Chris, who's always sick, he has some mom. <laughs> take it, yeah, take it from me. Uh, diet, and then you have to find... Well, water is part of diet, but like you have to find an activity that's going to give you a relief from stress. I would say in this environment mental discipline. Well, but that's that's how you exactly. develop the diet. That's how you stick to the diet. That's how you build time into your schedule. It could be running, it could be swimming. You got to like mentally could be gardening, commit to that. could be fishing. Something when you check out and let everything else come way down. That's. What I, that combination. What I like about what both of y'all just said, y'all didn't just talk about physical health. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times when we talk about health, we only think physical. Physical. You know? But physically, mental, physical, mental, and emotional health is super important. Mental might be a little bit more important than physical nowadays. Because I know some people that is in great shape physically, but they fucked up mentally. They're connected. They're very connected. It's not one or the other. It's the, yeah, you're right. It's not one or the other. You're absolutely correct. So that's, yeah. That's the first step in being healthy. Everything we just said. Uh, I really can't remember. He's, they're going to ask me. The question is, favorite moment episode of the year? I really do not know. Kudak, I don't know what you're trying to spell. I don't know. I don't have a favorite. My favorite moment of the year is probably Andrew selling out Madison Square Garden twice and selling out the forum. And the reason that's my favorite moment is because y'all can go back and listen to old podcasts and I would always say that I felt like one day Andrew was going to be the biggest comedian touring in the country. I think the guy's name is Russell uh, Peters. Peters. Russell Peters at the time was that person. And I saw Andrew in that space. And so when Andrew was selling out all these big arenas overseas, salute, love that, you know, but... You know, as he would even say, it's like kind of like the Latin pop star thing. You big over there, but can you do it over here? So I, I knew once he started coming over here, he was going to do the same thing. So now, being that I love to be right about things, <laughs> I can talk my shit. He sold out Madison Square Garden, you know, twice. And he sold out the farm and selling out arenas all over the United States of America. So for me, honestly, that's, my, that's, that's, that's been my favorite, at least moment of the year. Episode of the year? I don't know. I, I, I got to think about that. I got to think about that. Uh, what else, Taylor? Let's do one more. What about the lip one? The lip one? Yeah. What lip one? Put your lip on this dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to play them. I'm going home. I'm taking my ball and going home. No, she I, got you, actually. As always. <laughs> she got you. No, I'm not. I'm not. As, as, as always, I'm if, no, I don't. I'm not. I'm leaving. As always, if you listen to this podcast, 
You think you're smart, you think you're intelligent. You think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. See you in 2024.